All right, Dr. Supna Alice. Thank you for having me on. I mean, not for having me on. Thank you for coming <laughs> onto the podcast. I was so nervous about pronouncing your name properly. It's all good. You did good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no, thanks for coming out here. And um, those of you who are watching, it's I keep the uh, studio cold um, because my camera's overheat. So that's why I'm wearing a sweater today. I can't, for some reason, I can't handle the cold right now. And you're wearing a jacket. Yeah, so. it's chilly out. Yeah, it is, right? Yeah. You know, it might actually, because I don't have the the air conditioner on, it's probably colder in here than usual. That's probably what it is, why I can't handle it. I didn't even check the, the stacks. If I could keep it around 68 in here, yeah. I think it's colder than 68 right now. Yeah, it's all good, though. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. So, um, so, so, Doc, uh, Supna, um, <laughs> I know I brought you, we, we came on to talk about a few different things, right? Yeah. But can you just give, give uh, a background on, um, you know, what got you into uh, the areas of study? Because I looked at your background. You have like kinesiology or applied kinesiology. Um, there's nutrition. Um, you do a lot of different things. So um, can you kind of just describe what what got you to that? Uh, I mean, well, what led you down those paths? Hmm. And, you know, what drives you to do what you do? So my license is chiropractic. I met my husband, Glenn, who you know, in chiropractic school. He goes by G-Money on the streets, by the oh, way. Oh, he does? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so we met in chiropractic school, and um, and we opened up our own office 20 years ago. Whoa. 2003. Okay. Almost 21 years ago. Prior to that, we were working with different doctors, doctors that took us under their wing and mentored us. And mm -hmm. um, we we're very, very blessed that we both had... Christian doctors, faith-based doctors who are willing to teach us the trick of the trade, basically, and, like, educate us and then give us their blessing as we went out and opened up our own place. And we, the 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 whole path to where we are now um, is very driven by per, some of our personal experiences that we had. Um, we struggle with some fertility issues, Mm -hmm. When we tried to get pregnant, we tried to get pregnant actually in 2003 when we were opening up our office and it took us five years to get pregnant, which is a really, really long time. Like I think in today's world, if it's past six months, you start to see fertility doctors, right? Yeah. So during that time, we really had to educate ourselves on hormones, diet, emotional challenges that could have been in the way, really pray a lot and trust in what we thought God had planned for us. And so because we went through all that, we really dug deep and learned a lot. And that's kind of how we are, where we are now. So you were already a doctor before yes. you got into the um, more of the nutritional and stress things, or was it kind of... We were, dip? and we had learned about it, and we're helping people, but I feel like the passion came more after I went through what I went through. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's one thing to learn about it and help people, but when you actually go through it and you have the feelings, you can relate to them a little bit more, mm -hmm. a lot more, actually, and then the passion came. Okay. All right. What, um, I, I, there's one thing I've, I've read about you, like one area you work in and it's really uh, got my attention is mm -hmm. applied kine Well, besides the main thing, I want to talk to you about the gut brain connection, yes. which is very important. Yeah. And actually last night I was uh, with a friend of mine at Sprouts and um, he's having gut problems mm -hmm. and I try to, and this might be wrong and you can correct me about this and we can get to this deeper in a minute, but um, he's, I, uh, he got some Garden of Life uh, probiotics. I know mm -hmm. some of them are not as good as others. Mm -hmm. I usually use pr Garden of Life just products in general because okay. they're plant-based plant, plant -based or mm -hmm. supposed to be. And uh, and then I told him to get some sauerkraut, <laughs> to eat, you know, just to kind of consume regularly because it's high in probiotics mm -hmm. and some other gut uh, beneficial nutrients. But before we go into that, I've read about apl applied kinesiology. Yes. I've... I'm I'm very interested in that because I notice that it you it's used to treat different things and the body will tell you're able to I don't know if I'm reading this correctly you're able to read or kind of tell what's going on with the body through applied kinesiology yes so when anybody comes into our office no matter what is going on we uh, we the the way we approach 
healthcare is we look at the body. It's called the triad of health, basically. So imagine a triangle. Mm -hmm. uh, each side is equal length, and each side is equally as important. So there's the structural side of you, the chemical side of you, and the emotional side of you. So the structural side is like chiropractic, making sure your spine's aligned so the brain can communicate to the organs efficiently, making sure there's no connective tissue, scar tissue, so that the organs can communicate to each other efficiently. That's the structural side. Chemical side <coughs> is your diet. Are you deficient in any vitamins or minerals? Are you, do you have any sensitivities to anything? What is your gut doing? What are your hormones doing? This is all the chemical side of you, right? Then there's the emotional side of you, which has to do with our emotions. Our bodies hold on to everything we've ever experienced. Different organs hold on to different emotions, and we can have physical manifestations of that. We were talking about this a little bit earlier, right? So we can help the body not hold on to the emotions in a negative way. Obviously, it can't get rid of the emotions, but we can help the body deal with them a little bit better. So applied kinesiology is basically muscle response testing, where through muscle testing, we can check different reflex points on the body and see where the weaknesses are. Obviously, I can't diagnose this way, but if there's a weakness, say I'm muscle testing you, and I put my hand on your liver, and your liver is showing up weak on the muscle testing, my job as a kinesiologist is to figure out why is there weakness in that area. So it's more of like a, a functional test, right? So does your spine need to be adjusted so that the nerve can communicate, your brain can communicate to the liver properly? That would be structural. Chemical, is your liver detoxing properly? Um, are you drinking too much alcohol? Are you taking too much medication? Like what's going on chemically that could be affecting your liver? Or are there some emotions that are in there that we need to help your body clear? And liver, the emotions that are stored in the liver are anger, resentment, frustration, so we can just help to figure that out and and go from there. My liver must be swollen at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse no. me. No, it's all good. So that's what that's where that's what applied kinesiology, it's muscle testing. So it's awesome because you could come in with a symptom and someone else could come in with the exact same symptom, but the cause of what why you're having that symptom is totally different. That's why I love it so much, because then I can figure out exactly what's going on with you. Yeah. Yeah, that, that sounds very interesting. I I got to come by your office because it's not that far from my house. Yeah. And I want to get that done because okay. I do get kind of weird uh, physical manifestations of things. Mm -hmm. I recently, I've had this book for a while, but I'm recently just barely dabbing into it. Uh, it's called The Body Keep Score. Mm -hmm. And it talks about how our body, basically what you're saying, I think they kind of, they align. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it where... Um, you have you can have physical manifestation from you know psychological um, uh, events. Yes. Yeah, that that have occurred. Which yes. Yeah, that's hundred <laughs> percent. That's it. It's crazy. It's crazy that people starting to is this just being figured out like in the modern times or has this been known? Well, in Western medicine, it's just now being acknowledged, but the Eastern medicine has known this for tens of thousands of years. Okay. Right? So, like, yeah. even modern medicine is starting to acknowledge that anger, sorry, anger could be connected to cancer. Yes. And you know what's weird? You know, people used to say that all the time about, yeah. like, oh, man, they're so bitter, man. They're going to get, like, cancer yeah. or something. I've heard people say that, you know, throughout my life. Mm -hmm. and, but that was more of a, I pronounce this wrong a lot, anecdotal? Is that the right word? Anecdotal. Anecdotal. Yeah. <laughs> and that's more of anecdotal uh, uh, kind of thing. But now there's appears to be evidence that that, yes. that that affects. Have you ever heard of this? I have a friend of mine. Um, she's actually going through um, intensive EMDR therapy. Mm -hmm. And after her therapy, she starts feeling like shocks uh -huh. in her body, like electric, little, uh, randomly, just like a little shock, a buzz. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of that before? Like the body doing that? Mm -hmm. Or is that kind of? Yeah. I mean, the body is responding. Right. Okay. So it's like, that's good to me. That's a healing process. Like things are waking up. Oh, OK. Yeah. Because she's like, man, I, I get these. It's, it's not bad. It doesn't feel like anything negative, but she gets mm -hmm. it's like these little buzz things that go on. Nothing surprises me anymore oh. when I hear things <laughs> like that. I'm like, oh, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> OK. All right. So ap applied kinesiology. That's pretty interesting. Is it any way related to um, uh, 
Remember, I'm speaking out of ignorance here. I'm just get, guessing because yeah. I've had someone do ART. Have you ever heard active release technique? Yeah, totally different. Totally different. Okay. Because I know like one time like I had a guy who's like, oh, your neck's messed up. Let me press over here. And like yeah. pressed on my ribs and it released my neck. Yes. You know, yeah. it was like, okay. We so. do all that too. But that's okay. just the one side of the triangle. That's the structural side. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So apply, apply kinesiology, is that more for a diagnosis type of thing? Or is, yes. there, is there a treatment? There is a treatment as well, depending upon what shows up when we muscle test. Okay. So if we need to just do structural work on you, that's where the chiropractic comes in. And we'll do that. Usually it's a combination of everything. If it's chemical, then we, we'll talk about diet. We'll talk about nutrition. We'll make sure that the patient's taking the right supplements. And then if it's emotional, we'll help, we'll do, we have different techniques. One of them is called NET, which stands for neuroemotional technique, which then will help the body get rid of the emotions in a negative way. You have a technique for that? Yeah. It's called NET. NET. So powerful. Very simple, but very powerful. Oh, yeah. We need to talk about yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> in general, is, can you give an overview of what that is? Yeah, so through the muscle testing, I'm going to go back to the liver example because that's what we started with. Uh -huh. Say I muscle test you and liver shows up and it's emotional. So I'll go through all the different emotions that um, are stored in the liver. Say it's frustration, okay? Now I need to figure out well, what are you frustrated about? And the main things that people get frustrated about are money, job, career, finances, or things. That's one category. Um, anyone you've ever loved or anyone who's ever loved you, that's another category. And the last one is you. That would be any role that you play, right? You're the father, you're the husband, you, whatever whatever the roles are. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we figure out what the emotion is, what it's related to, and once I and then is there a time in the past that you had a similar emotion? So now we go back into previous episodes or childhood things that have happened because things build up on each other. And we find out where that emotion started, when it started. And to treat it, you literally just put your hand on the organ, which would be the liver here, the other hand on the forehead. I have the patient really feel that emotion as much as possible. And while the patient is breathing in and out, we tap certain vertebral like areas on their spine. Uh -huh. And it, you're connecting the organ to the emotions tapping the spine, very specific areas during breathing, and it just helps the body to not hold on to it in a negative way. Oh, wow. So you're going to still feel the emotion of anger, yes. right? But the point, the goal is that, say something happens, right? Like say you're having anger or frustration with a certain person. The goal is that next time you're in contact with this person or you think about this person, your body's not going to do this again. Yeah. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, okay, whatever, you know? That's amazing. That's good. Yeah. yeah. It's, you it's, can still feel the anger, but your body is not going to react. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Kay. Yeah. It's, it sounds, it sounds, I mean, I talk about this all the time, Okay. but it sounds like EMDR a little Kay. bit where, I mean, the results yes. were that you think about something, you know, like, oh, and yeah. it sent you down this, this rabbit hole of just whatever physical response or whatever your response is. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I didn't right. know that all these, there's these innovations or discoveries so w going back to fertility okay. did you have to apply all these things to to get oh, yeah. your body to oh, yeah. uh to work yeah and it was very frustrating because a lot of people come to us to get pregnant mm -hmm. right and so here i am a holistic doctor <clears throat> getting all my patients pregnant and i couldn't get myself pregnant right <laughs> and i'm like what what is happening like this just doesn't make any sense so glenn my husband started learning a lot about hormones and estrogen dominance. And I started learning more about the diet and genetically modified foods and the introduction of that and how it affects our body and what it does and all the unknowns and how we're basically all living in this real life experiment as guinea pigs with the introduction of genetically modified foods. And what is that doing to my body? So it just made me more aware and mindful of what I'm buying at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. It made Glenn learn a lot about hormones. And now as a result, he helps so many women. So funny because people will call our office and want to see me for the hormone issues. And I'm like, you really need to see my husband because he's, he's really good at it, you know, because mm -hmm. he's learned because he helped me. Yeah, that, that's interesting. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure that Glenn probably has a uh, I wonder what his opinion is on this this new thing they're coming out with with 
Um, I think it's laboratory made meat. Have you heard of that? Yeah. That has disgusting. to be worse than GMO, right? Yeah. Because it's not even from an animal. It's just no. completely made in a lab. Yeah. It's disgusting. <laughs> It sounds disgusting. It's disgusting. Yes, I, I don't. I don't even. I don't even understand why they came up with that. Like, I, what I was, honestly uh, don't even know. I don't know. Yeah, someone's like, "Hey, do you know what? Let's just create meat." I think it probably has something. This is my guess, mm. right? I'm totally guessing. My guess is it has something to do with the like environment, right? Oh, like the animals. Yeah, because you know, like all the they talk about how. Having all these cows are just really bad for the environment. And now there's this whole like climate change and let's get rid of the animals now and like make it in the lab. Plus money. It's probably more money for them. Yeah. I'm pretty there's, sure it all leads yeah. back to money, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so nutrition. Okay. Well, um, let's. Ju- I guess we'll just dive right into this. The gut brain connection. Yes. Um, that's something I've read about probably, I mean, off and on for about 10 years now. And I think like Harvard has done some reviews and research on it. And there's these different organizations that have researched it. And I've learned things, but I don't know if it's it's true. But from what I, and correct me, I'm just uh, giving you where my perspective is. Mm -hmm. And then I guess we can go from there is that the, um, our gut, um, it can, it realizes it's like a second, they call it like a second brain Mm -hmm. where it, um, not only does it like it can sense things like emotions or whatever, but it also like makes like serotonin that mm-hmm. goes into our brain and, mm-hmm. and so forth. But I never understood how it gets from our gut to our brain. Mm-hmm. You know, I know I know our whole body's connected, but I, I didn't know like does it go up the spine or does it go through the it kicks it out into the blood? Yeah. Oh, okay, it kicks it out into the blood and so forth. But do you mind kind of explaining how that works? The 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 gut brain connection. Oh, it's complicated, right? Cause yeah, the simple, the simple, <laughs> the simple version for people like me. So yeah, the the gut kind of has its own kind of like system of neurons that produces a lot of the neurotransmitters that are in the brain, basically, right? So you mm-hmm. need to have a healthy gut to have a healthy brain. But that being said, like I just remember learning that the like envision like a funnel, right? And Uh the gut is the bottom part. No matter what's going on in the body, you got to get the gut working. Yeah. Because if you try to fix, pile everything up on here and your gut's not working, it's going to back up and it's going to backfire. So the gut, there's the, the neurons that produce the neurotransmitters that affect the brain. But there's also like bacterial infections and parasitic infections and yeast infections, candida, or a leaky, possible leaky gut issue, like all these other things that could be going on in the gut that will also affect the brain, set aside the like neurotransmitters apart from that. What is leaky gut? I've heard of that a lot. Is that like... So leaky gut is where the lining of your small intestine has become thinned out. So there's no... In your small intestine is where your body is differentiating between what it wants to absorb from the food uh-huh. and then what toxins it wants to push out through the gut, yeah. through the large intestine to get out through your bowels, through your bowels, right? Yeah. So if there's a leaky gut, there's there's no regulation. There's kind of like a free for all. So your body's not only like not absorbing nutrients, but it could be reabsorbing toxins. So now these toxins are floating around in your system. It's going to affect your brain. Okay. Yeah, when, see, when I first heard about leaky gut, I know that I'm speaking out of complete ignorance, yeah. but I thought I've always envisioned leaky gut as like someone's rear end leaked, you yeah. know, like, like uh, you know what I'm saying, yeah. leaving skid marks. Like yeah. I thought like, that's what leaky gut is. Yeah. So it's leaking back into the system because the, the gut is porous. Yes. Is that correct? So it's leaking back into your body. So, yeah. So the the your body is not doing a good job differentiating between absorbing nutrients versus absorbing toxins. It's reabsorbing toxins into the body and not absorbing nutrients. Okay. All Does that right. make sense? Yes, yes. And and I'm assuming there has to be a natural fix to that, right? We don't have to take the the, the drugs that we see on the commercials for leaky gut, correct? No. Or those are bad, right? Yeah. No, there's there's supplements that you could take. What what is like a a, a, a basic treatment protocol like if someone starting to develop that? Is... So like we have a supplement that's called Total Leaky Gut company called NutraWest, who I love, makes it. So it's just a combination of different herbs. It's called what? 
total leaky gut. It's, total leaky it's, it's, They make it easy, right? Yeah, There's yeah. total probiotics, total <laughs> enzymes, total leaky gut. Okay. <laughs> so I'll give that to the patient, which uh-huh. is a combination of different herbs. But then I'll talk to them about what they need to eliminate from their diet or whatever they're taking in to prevent from making it worse. What causes leaky gut? Well, it's a combination. Oftentimes it's stress, but also medications. So if somebody has taken a lot of like non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, right, throughout their life. Like Tylenol, Advil? Advil, yeah. Okay. Um, sugar, alcohol. Sugar? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Like these are all just irritants on the gut. So all of these things. There could be some underlying emotional stuff. Uh, antibiotics. Oh, yeah. Vaccines. Vaccines? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that at all. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, when I was a kid, we talked before we started that I lived out of the country. Yeah. And when I lived out of the, out of the country on the, like, vacation time, yeah, I would go to other countries, <laughs> like yeah. to the Philippines or Japan. Uh, and this is to the military, um, as a military brat, or whatever you want, they call us, I don't know what the new term is now. But the military would <laughs> load us with vaccines. I'm talking both arms and butt cheeks. But as we're preparing to go, there was no like, oh, there had to have been some bad side effects, right? From that, you know, getting shot in both arms and in your cheeks. I mean, we'd be crying. And that's what you do, I think, a week before we leave is. Uh, it's not good. It's not good. Okay. So I'm assuming the COVID vaccine you're not a big fan of. No. No. Yeah. I had, you know what? I regret taking that. <laughs> yeah. I had to take it at the time I was, I was teaching. Yeah. And for me to be allowed to return to work, yeah. they required me to take it. And I got so sick off of that thing. And now the information's coming out on those, like the company's like, yeah, we're not even sure if they really work. They don't work because a vaccine is supposed to, I think, prevent, right? Like we use the vaccine to uh, um, eradicate polio, I think, if that's correct. But this COVID thing, people are still getting COVID with the vaccine, and then went from it stops you from getting it to it reduces the symptoms. But that's objective. Like, how do you know what the symptoms were going to be as opposed to what you got? You know, there's no way of measuring. There's no baseline Mm-mm. of knowing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, you're about to say something. <laughs> no, go for it. I have to be careful what I say. Oh, got right? it. Got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. With, especially when it comes to vaccines. Yes. Yes, I understand. Yes. Well, I don't, so I, I, I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll go in on it. There was never any research done on the COVID vaccine. It's not. It wasn't even a vaccine. The way vaccines are actually really made and the definition of a vaccine, the COVID vaccine was never a vaccine. And so they never did any research on it at all, ever. And they just put it out there into the system for people to get. It was basically a fear thing and a money thing yeah because it was so fast too yeah. that was the thing that tripped me mm-hmm. out how quickly they got that out there mm-hmm. and the media didn't help because do you remember when covid first started um i mean i'm sure you do everyone remembers mm-hmm. that but let's say like day three like when they shut the schools down initially when because we did I, to me and my you you probably have more of a tune in on what's going on mm-hmm. i didn't mm-hmm. i i just took in what was on the media but i i don't i don't come I don't even say completely. I don't trust American media. So I try to find find independent outlets or I'll look at the news outside the United States. And I remember thinking like, like say, let's say day three, schools are shut down. I thought, is this like one of these giant world plagues? Or is this like, remember, was it World of Worlds where a virus got loose and just kind of, no, no, no. I am legend. Is I am legend that a virus that killed everyone? That's the one with Will Smith, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy when you go back and watch it. It was in New York. There was a major, it wasn't a virus. It was a vaccine that they had for cancer that they gave to people that made people turn into zombies. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. it was very like everyone had masks on. They were checking their temperatures. Yeah. Co- uh, New York was very isolated. Like they were getting people out. It's crazy. Yeah. So I was thinking, is it one of these scenarios? Is this like the end of the world scenario? That's like day three out. But as it began to go, they were like, oh, man, these hospitals are shut down. And this, and I was, I'm not shut down, but just overloaded and yeah. people are dying. And it was scary, man. And then when you bring in this vaccine and you have, uh, I think it's Dr. Fauci, who's controversial to say, to putting it lightly. And 
you're like, okay, well, he must know because he's the, he holds the title of, I don't even know what his title was, some, I guess, advisor, health advisor for the country or whatever. Mm -hmm. or, and yeah, so the school districts bought into it and then they're like, hey, for you to come back to school, you have to get vaccinated. I remember I did not want to get vaccinated. As a teacher. You yeah. Mean as a teacher. Yeah. As a teacher. Yeah. And after I got vaccinated, I mean, I got crazy sick, you know, like, you know, like your bones ache and everything gets sick. I got like that. Mm -hmm. And, but it's weird. It only lasted three days, but it was horrible. And you're like, what the hell did I inject myself with? I've taken a lot of vaccines. I've never had this type of reaction. Mm -hmm. And then my concern now is what are the long term, long term effects of this? We have no idea. We just injected. I don't know, a, a good part, if not the majority of our population with a vaccine that's, um, we don't, we have no long-term research on it. We are the long-term research. We are. Yeah. Just like I was talking about genetically modified foods earlier, how we're a guinea pig in a long-term research project. It's the same thing with this. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know what I learned about genetically modified foods? Mm -hmm. And we'll get back to the gut in a second, but bananas. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the banana we buy in the grocery store, almost all the bananas, those are GMO. I could be wrong, but from what I read, they are. And what, what led me down this rabbit hole is that uh, my mother's from the Philippines. We're from the Philippines, and I've been there you know, several times. Um, the bananas there, they're loaded with seeds. The seeds, bananas are known to be a seeded fruit. Mm -hmm. The banana that you have that we buy in the grocery store, it has seeds, but they're so small. That's what you see in the center, that little circle ring. Mm -hmm. Those are seeds. And so I read, like, because I was like, where do those bananas come from? How do they regrow? And those, it's been genetically modified where it's like a seedless banana mm -hmm. that's that you see a lot of the crops that come into here. Mm -hmm. But a normal banana, there's some bananas that are mostly seeds. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, holy crap, man, I had no idea. Yeah. So. I mean, it's supposed to be that if it's organic, it cannot be genetically modified. Really? Yes. Like you're, right now, you're not you're not supposed to take an organic, like if it's great, if it's grown organically you're not supposed to take a genetically modified seed and grow it that's how it's supposed to be i don't know i don't know if that's i mean i need to check i'm gonna check now but i don't know if that's with bananas I, from what i've read if you could even look this up yeah research it a regular banana the banana we eat yeah if you look at the original f how it was before it yeah. doesn't look like the banana we buy now no none of them do i think there's a difference between like evolving it in a different way to make it seedless versus like what I'm talking about with genetically modifying it where they like literally inject like chemicals into the seed and like alter the genes, the actual DNA of the seed to where. Yes. Like corn. Yes. Okay. So it's resistant to certain things. Yes. To, okay. To the pesticides. So, okay. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. So are, would, seedless watermelons be considered the seeds were bred out of it or is it genetically modified i don't i don't actually don't even know the answer to that one because oh, okay. like when i because because there's a i think there's a difference between like what is the word i'm looking for where you like breed right where you breed different like like cauliflower and whatever together the seeds to make something different versus yeah. like the harmful side effects of like literally injecting chemicals into the seed to make it resistant to roundup yeah, grafting. Yes. It's grafting, right? Okay, is that the word? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it's grafting. Yeah. Like sometimes they'll mix a lemon and an apple yeah. or whatever, a lemon yeah. and an orange. Yeah. Yes. That, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to look into that then. Yeah, I'm trying to stay away from GMOs too. Yeah, good. I can tell because the I, I'm, I stay pretty active. Uh -huh. And if I consume like say, um, I mean, obviously junk food, I can't, I can't consume it. It, it, it's bad fuel. I'll get sick uh, exercising. But GMOs, I could tell. I think I could. I don't know if it's psychosomatic, but I think I can tell when I'm training if, I'm, if I've ate something like that. Like, mm -hmm. it doesn't burn right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, my endurance is, is reduced. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's interesting. But going back to the gut-brain connection. Okay. Is it, so, with the gut-brain connection, so you can get leaky gut. What were the other things? Parasites, candida. Candida. But yeah. candida, it, candida, that's that could be men and women, right? Yes. And candida, is this correct, that um, what, f candida feeds off of sugar? Yes. How does that work? So candida is like, like you know, a yeast infection. Women can get yeast infections. Yeah. It's basically a systemic yeast infection. It's like in your bloodstream. It's like everywhere. You know, it affects your gut. 
Like it starts in your gut and then just go, goes into your bloodstream. So our gut, like, so there's actual, like, the yeast infection can be in the gut too? Yes. Oh, my goodness. And okay. And parasites too. And often they go hand in hand is what I see. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Like we all oh. have, it's really disgusting, but we all have parasites. Oh, <laughs> am, okay. I, am I making you nauseous? <laughs> no, I, don't know. I, I just, I'm worried about asking a question about, because listen, I, I know there's good, like good and bad bacteria, yes. good and bad, whatever that's yes. going on in our gut, but are there worms? Yeah, the parasites, yes. So there could be worms in there too with candida. Is candida associated with worms? So no, there are two different types of infections, but I often find if somebody has one, that they're more prone to getting the other. Okay, like, but you in know, my like, opinion, you know, like we're talking about parasites and, yeah. and candida. The parasites that you're thinking of are they worm parasites? <laughs> I just have an issue with worms. Are they worm parasites in there, or can maybe be. or they oh, can be? How do you know? Well, I've seen pictures of people that do parasite cleanses. And oh they, no, they poop them out, and I see them. No, 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 not how you know. <laughs> how do you know? How would I know? How would I'm sorry, not you. Oh. Know. I meant it as like, how would someone know this? How would if someone, they had it? Yeah. Well, you could have symptoms of bloating, discomfort, cramping. Me, me. okay, that's me. Right, and then <laughs> I was going back to the applied kinesiology and the muscle testing. There are reflex points for infection. So, really, in at my normal scan, I will check to see if your body is fighting that. Through I need to come in. There's a specific reflex point. Yeah. Okay, I need to come in. Yeah. Because my body doesn't work right. Yeah. You know, it it's well, I had some health issues, but it doesn't work right. And one thing I notice it, it I get bloated very easy yeah. and um fatigued pretty easy mm-hmm. and and uh like just my energy. Mm-hmm. It's I mean is it energy? Yeah, energy, right? How you feel like mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's not a consistent thing no matter what I do. Like <laughs> like I over the weekend, like I think on Sunday I just slept all day. <laughs> I just slept all day because so there might be like an adrenal issue too. Adrenal, oh, that's stress, right? That's stress, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's all it all goes hand in hand, like they all tie in together. Okay, now I'm worried because I'm mad. I have need- a no, I just have a <laughs> phobia of the worms. Like if oh, I saw yeah. a worm come out of my body, that's kind of rare. Like if it's that bad, but I have seen pictures. People send me pictures. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, that freaks me out. And I've seen, have you seen those, you know who gets worms a lot in their intestines in the animal kingdom are bears. Yeah. You ever see the footage of bears with their worms? No. I don't know. I haven't. Oh my God. (laughs) They're so bad. Because you know, bears are loaded with trichinosis and other stuff, right? That's why you got, you, when you, if you ever eat a bear, you have to overcook it Mm -hmm. and you're still at risk. Bears and coyotes. Mm -hmm. That's, I I mean, maybe that's God telling us not to eat those things, Mm -hmm. but you could see bears walk. Just if you if you feel like doing this, if you go on YouTube, just put bear worms. I don't know if I want to do that. No, they're like, they're literally walking around, and there's like a stream of worms hanging out of its butt. It's That's, in nature, yeah. and it's just it's not like uncommon. Their worms are just coming out and falling out. I mean, I remember when my kids were in school before I started homeschooling them, and there were like worms that were going around, like because it's you could get it from each other. And one of the ways to check to see if your kid had it is you have to go in their room when they're sleeping because they come out at night and you literally like, <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I like, know. Look, just open disgust. up their butt cheeks and look. And moms saw worms, like little tiny worms coming out of their kids' butts. You mean like worms, like the kind of worms like dogs get, those little small ones? Yeah, or like, like the little wiggly ones. Oof. Yeah, I, I couldn't do what, what, Do they go back in or something? Like they just come out at night and go back in? I think so, yeah. Like and vampires? Then, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I'm like, I'm not going to look at my kids. I just muscle tested them. <laughs> right? To the see. Only, see. Yeah, you got to wait. Like, you got to work, work around. You got to work around. Yeah. See, I'm just worried about the big, long ones. Yeah. And I remember my, um, who had one before, and it was before we even got together, but her and her family would always talk about it as my ex-wife. Just one day, a big worm just came out of her, and it was dead. Like, yeah. it, it just came out and, mm-hmm. well, it was dying mm-hmm. and came out and died. And they put it in a jar and took it to whatever. And she, it happened to her, her family's, her dad's from Guyana. Mm-hmm. And they went to Guyana for, you know, vacation or visit family and came back. Then like, I don't know, a few weeks later, a worm comes out of her. Yep. And I, that just freaked me out. Is there an increase? I'm, I'm going to get back to gut brain. I just, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got to ask this one last worm question because there's so much stuff on social media about worms being in meat. Yes. Is sushi loaded with worms? That's I mean, it can be. That's why we eat wasabi with it to kill the parasites. It's raw meat. 
Is that what the wasabi's for? Yeah. I don't eat the wasabi. Oh, if you eat sushi, you have to eat the wasabi. That's what kills the parasites in case there's parasites in the raw meat. That's why it's there. Oh, okay. Because I, I think there's gluten in wasabi. Probably. Are you gluten free? Yeah, I have an allergy. Uh, you know what? I have a friend who doesn't do the wasabi maybe because of the gluten and he uses lemon. Oh, yeah. I put lemon on it. I'm wondering if that might help with the parasites. I think it does actually. L- they, they, Let's our, just say gut, it does. our gut acid that won't kill it? No, no obviously not, right? No. no. Yeah, no. Okay. I don't know. I just thought that that's what the wasabi is for. Yeah. Is there the, gluten in wasabi? Yeah. I, I, well, at least the places I've went to, yeah. Okay. I think to make it that pasty oh, you know texture, you have right. to add. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm no, sorry. it's okay. You're right, because I do remember asking for gluten-free wasabi. Places have it. Oh, do they? Okay. You have to ask for it. Okay, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, yes. I went to, um, I normally, my favorite place to get right now, sushi, is uh, Air One. Have you heard of Air One? No. Oh, you would love this place. It's E-R-E-W-H-O-N. Oh, yes, the grocery store. Yeah, the grocery store. Yeah. They have a sushi restaurant inside. Okay. Oh, man, and everything's wild caught. It's, um, and they make different types of sushi, like with black rice and seaweed and but everything you could tell it's wild caught like the fish because the even the um tuna it's dark red mm-hmm. it's not pink you know and you could tell it's not, not farmed. farmed yeah nothing's farmed and it's it's real good there and that store tries to focus on organics they're so. up in la yeah, yeah yeah so i that's right my nice. <laughs> i know it sounds kind of bougie <laughs> no, no but they, they have but you only have like four locations now yeah yeah, so I when I go there, I used to know the owner of that place. She actually owned a sushi restaurant in um, La Cañada. Okay. And they asked her, hey, will you open up a little booth here to sell sushi? Nice. And she's nice. like, yeah. And she says her booth in the store makes more money than the restaurant. So she just started putting them in all the Air Ones, and she's like, I'm not doing the restaurants anymore because, you know, you don't need the, the big giant building, all the overhead, the employees. Staff. and But people buy all the staff, yes. And you... And you um, she gets the sushi, but it just the, the, the worms just gets in my mind because uh, the I know this is bad, but I consume a lot of social media, not even just social media, just whatever's on the internet. And there's people showing that there's worms in meat, or you know, just different things, and it mm-hmm. it's it gets me thinking like crap. But it hasn't changed my my eating habits yet. But it just you know it just makes me think like I, I hope that there's not worms in this. I don't think there's a way the FDA FDA probably doesn't even check for worms or stuff like that so no. and so why so when you said there could be worms in the stomach i'm like i'm definitely a candidate yeah going back to the emotional thing too mm-hmm. right because we're talking about the gut brain issue with gut brain health and how having a healthy gut will help you to have a healthy brain right mm-hmm. um but it kind of goes the opposite way too so f- from an emotional perspective with parasites from my experience, what I've seen is say you've got like someone in your life who's like kind of like a parasite in your life, like just a ugh, person's always there, right? Yeah. That can affect your gut. Really? In the form of a parasite. And same as like candida from an emotional perspective, if you have deep seated resentment, you have a higher chance of getting candida. It's like, it's like a yeast infection, like fungus and mold that's like festering in your body. So if you've got like deep seated resentment, that can cause. So it kind of goes back and forth. Like the emotional part can actually, emotional trauma or issues can cause gut health health issues too. So it's like a two way street yes. communication. Yes. Okay. And candida, when you have it, is it true? One of the telltale signs is you crave more sugar, mm-hmm. and yeah. it kind of feeds it, and it's because I I. I, see, I didn't know if that was due, because, you know, sometimes people go, oh, no, you're craving more sugar because your blood sugar spiked, and it makes you crave it more. But candida can do the same thing, mm-hmm. or are those two working together? And parasites can, too, make you crave more sugar. But so can adrenal dysfunction if you're under too much stress. There's a lot of things that will make you crave sugar. Okay. So that's why I love the muscle testing is because, like I said earlier, like somebody could come in with one symptom and someone could come in with the same exact symptom, but, like, why you're craving sugar could be totally different. Okay. Compared to the next person. So yeah. And can it can it can the gut brain how about depression? Does it deal with stuff like that? Does it affect your 
like say long term depression. Yes. That could be directly attributed to the gut. Yes. How does one treat that? Like, because some people say probiotics. Some people say, <laughs> I because I, I read a lot into this because I I try to you know do a lot of self help ment- mental health self help stuff, mm-hmm. and some people, quote unquote experts say no, don't take probiotics because your your um the stomach acid is destroyed before it gets to the gut anyways. And other people say, no, there's some probiotics that will get in there. It has to be a special encapsulated to get past the, the acid. Then, you know, there's just different schools of thought and it gets confusing. And a lot of them contradict or they even dispute, literally directly dispute with each other online. Like, oh, Dr. Axe doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. And then this person's like, no, no, you know, do you have any advice or an opinion on that? It's really hard to answer because it's seriously a case by case scenario right so like somebody comes in with depression and their body just could be deficient deficient in um like good fats Mm. maybe they just need some fish oil and that's it maybe they've been on so many antibiotics their whole life and they never and when you're on an antibiotic you kill the bad bacteria but you kill the good bacteria too your body needs that good bacteria in order for your gut to work properly They've been on all these antibiotics their whole life. They never took probiotics, so they need probiotics, right? Maybe they need a combination of both. Maybe they need the fish oil and the probiotics. Um, The next person could come in and have depression, and I muscle test them, and they have, like, severe, severe candida, in my opinion. And in that case, I would not put them on probiotics because sometimes if the candida is very bad, the candida will feed off of the probiotics and, like, actually get get worse whoa even even with like sauerkraut and kombucha and fermented foods so some people can't do that if they're finding a a candida infection so we need to kill that first and then slowly start to introduce the probiotics and that person may or may not need fish oil also or i'll check to see if they had like say it's a, a teenager right did they have a lot of vaccines So I'll go and check and muscle test them and say, hey, did all the chemicals from the vaccines affect everything? And that's what's causing it. Or are you spending too much time on your phone? And are you playing too many video games? Are you getting hung up and drawn into social media, getting sucked into all the fear that's going on in the world? Are you stalking me? Is that what you're 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 saying? Depression. (laughs) So when you ask, like, what's like, how do you treat it? There's so many factors and that's what i love about the muscle testing because we can see like what's going on right well not well i'm sorry let me be more specific yeah. not the treatment of depression yeah but the treatment like once you find out someone's gut the microbiome's off okay and say let's say they do need probiotics mm-hmm. what is the an, what are do you know what are some effective ways of getting in there that's what i mean there's contradiction on mm-hmm. You know, oh, if you take probiotics, those are a waste of money, you know, and other people are like, well, no. So it yeah. depends, right? The nutraceutical company is a multi-billion dollar company. The FDA does not regulate anything. They're supposed to, but they do not have the money or the manpower to do that. So any Joe Schmo can say, hey, I want to make some money in this multi-billion dollar industry and go out there and get like the worst quality ingredients, put a product together, put it on the market hire like a great marketing company to say this is the great best one out there Mm -hmm. and it doesn't do crap for you you poop it all out it makes you worse because the chemicals that are in there are so toxic to your body got it so there are bad (laughs) supplements out there a lot of them are bad right so that's why you have to know like which ones are the good ones probiotics are not bad it just depends on which ones you're getting right and you need a prebiotic and a probiotic and you need to kind of change it up a little bit and so there's certain companies that are out there Garden of, which is the one that Garden you of take? Life. Garden of Life used to be like a smaller company, and I think they got bought out by like a big, big company. They did, and they're, and right. yes, and there's a big change to their products now. I yes. can see it. Yes. And so I Not used to happy. buy their products until, or, or suggest them until I found out they got bought out by a big company. Like That's if, recently. Yeah. I, was it only recently? Yeah, probably in the I last think, few years. Like yeah. in the last, yeah. In the last like 10 years. Oh no! I mean, they got well. They got they got sold again. Okay. And some bigger, someone bigger bought them. But I'll, I'm okay. interrupting you. I'll, I'll explain. That's okay. This. So, bottom line is, is like I only sell 
co- certain companies like products that I've done the research and I know that the company actually cares about the quality of their ingredients, mm-hmm. right? That they're going to be helpful. And also there's so many, somebody needs a probiotic, right? And I have all these different probiotics that could work on someone. Well, that's where the muscle testing comes in to see which one's going to be best for you. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, no, I, I'm on the same page with you're saying. I mean, what you're doing, I'm, mm-hmm. they say I'm scooping what you're pooping. Yeah. I'm, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I get what you're saying, but yeah. like my, my thing was, my hang up was, but you did answer my question okay. was, no, there's people that just straight out say probiotics are a waste. Mm-hmm. Don't do it at all. And then other people go, no, they like saying what you're saying. Yeah, you, sh- you can. It depends on the situation. Yes. So, okay, so there, they, there is a place for them. Yes. Okay, got it. Yeah, some people say there's no place. It's just, it's a scam. Like some people say multivitamins are a scam or or whatever else the products are, which I don't know, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I just know there, there are synergistic effects of taking certain nutrients at the same time mm-hmm. and or there's a counteractive effect sometimes too. But with probiotics, I always wondered because I do use them. Um, I'm in the right now. I'm using um, a generic brand, um, uh, Sprouts brand, but it's made. The people at Sprouts told me it's made by, I forget one of the bigger companies, maybe Sunray or okay. no, or maybe it might be made by Garden of Life. I'm not sure. The ingredients are food. It's not like, um, you know, it's just fermented food yeah. stuff in capsules. So I take those, but yeah, I need to get my gut balanced out. I'm glad I'm talking to you right yeah. now because I'm no, I'm serious. Once we're done, I want to make an appointment. Okay. Yeah, because I need to come in. I want to get the <laughs> muscle test. Um, because I'm all. I'd rather. I'm the type of person, and I'd recommend this for other people. Is that, um, you know, the things you're talking about are very important, and no one thinks about their health until they have cancer, or, um, untreatable depression, or something. You know, real. Uh, or no, not untreatable. What's it called? Drug resistant mm-hmm. depression and different things, but. All these things could be prevented. And I always, I tell my friends, because I, when I do martial arts, all of us, one thing about jujitsu, you know, I do jujitsu, is that a lot of us start getting in tune with our health. Mm-hmm. And the reason why is because we really like jujitsu. And the littlest tweak of what you eat, even on your rest day, you'll come and train and you're trying to have some fun, but you're throwing up or mm-hmm. you're getting sick. And so it just kind of by nature, it's like a, your diet's secondary, like, like a side effect, a good diet, right? And I tell people, because some people are like, oh, man, like these probiotics are $50 or $80. I'm like, it's worth it because you would spend that more than that on, on a dinner eating junk at a restaurant. And, and I tell people, you got to weigh out your priorities. It's like a car. Do you, you, you need to wash it. And it might be good sometimes to put a little wax on it to protect the paint and take care of the interior. And, the, and so, you know, just the maintenance on it. Check the oil. Check the air, the tire on the airs, rotate them. It's good to spend the extra $20 or whatever to rotate the tires so they wear down evenly or it, it, spread, it extends the longevity. I, I, when people can, when you give it to something, uh, when you need an example that's tangible like a car, people in my world tend to understand it better because they just look at it as a waste of money. Like mm-hmm. this may or may not work, you know, because they're expecting like an Advil, you know, like say, or a painkiller. So if you had knee surgeries, which guys have in jujitsu, you take the pain med, the pain goes away like that they don't realize no no you're investing in your health you're maintaining the long term it's like a home mow your lawn don't you know you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying like maintain oh yeah. take care of it so yeah. it's worth the investment yes yeah but people don't see it that way they look at it as just a waste of uh not a waste yeah like a waste like a waste yeah because you can't feel the results right away yes yes and and, and i'm talking results even but if if a normal person looked at what they spend on the weekend on a date, that could have been your month's supply of supplements mm-hmm. that's going to help you out in the long term. Mm-hmm. But they don't. They don't. But there's a gratification in the date. The hey, uh, so yeah. if we go back to my place. What's going? You know, the excitement of the game. And then, I also I also feel like you invest now in your health with the supplements and you know all the the good a gym membership even. Yes. You know? Or when you're older, you're going to be spending way more money at the doctor's office to try to, like, fix all these problems that you could have prevented to begin with. Exactly. With a fraction of the cost. You yeah. Know? Yes, right? exactly. Yes. Like, yes. And that even goes to outside of supplements. 
I'm I'm hoping you agree because you're the expert. And I, yeah. You know, I don't want to say something like that's crazy, Kenny. That's such no. a, but um, I would say even simple things like stretching, you know, and stuff like that. People just don't take the time to do. Yeah. I tell my friends, listen, if you're going to watch TV, sit on the floor maybe for a minute, kind of just lean towards your toes, you know, kind of stretch the hamstrings or stretch things because approaching my age, when people I'm in my 40s, mm-hmm. when people late 40s, uh, when people uh, get our age, they start going, oh man, my knees hurt and. But they, they haven't played pro sports or anything hard in their life or whatever. Like, well, dude, you've been sitting 8 to 10 hours a day. Mm-hmm. Well, sitting all day at work, mm-hmm. sitting in your car, driving home, then coming home and sitting and watching TV. Mm-hmm. Things are going to get tight, mm-hmm. tighten up. You're not 16 years old anymore. Nope. And you got to start loosening those body parts up and stretching the tendons. You got to move your body. You got to, yes. And you're sitting at a desk for eight hours in front of a screen, right? Mm-hmm. So, like the negative effects of that screen and the, what it, what that's doing to your body too. Oh, please explain. I, you, 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 there's a, <laughs> the, the Glenn ever table guy, a guy named Jason is in the um, men's group. No. Jason's into that no. screen thing. Um, okay. I can't remember his last name right now. Um, uh, he wears like uh, red glasses. Yeah. Red, but I just bought a pair of Oakley's yeah. that they, Oakley came out with a whole line for screens Oh, they did? Yeah. Nice. And they're um, kind of a golden color, but they have something infused that blocks certain things. Like the blue light glasses? Blue light and some other stuff, like the strain. Like somehow it, it causes a strain. It's supposed to reduce that. But I'm taking them to get a prescription lens put in with the same coating. Nice. But it's, So is that legitimate, the screen? So Yeah, because they're electric. It's electromagnetic frequencies, right? You've heard, have you heard that before? EMF? Let me tell you something. I have a grounding <laughs> blanket. You do? Yes. Sweet. All right. So I'm at that level and okay. I take my feet out and put them in the ground. Okay. Usually uh, gonna, when it's not raining, you know. I was going to talk about grounding too. Yeah, please. Let's get there. No, no. Let's, let's, the, please spill, spill it all out because people are listening and they don't know this stuff. Yeah. What we're saying, is, it's like we're talking about UFOs right now. Yeah. Like they have no idea. Okay, good. Because I love this. Okay. <laughs> so you're, the screen, there's electromagnetic frequencies. So you can't see it, but they're out there, right? Like radio waves. Like you can't see it, but they're out there. And it's electrical waves. And our brains are electrical and our hearts are electrical. So imagine like what that's doing to the frequency of our heart and our brain. And it's right there. So it can definitely negatively affect us. So it needs to be like at least three feet away. So people are sitting at work all day for eight hours, literally in front of a screen that could be negatively affecting the brain and or the heart. And this kind of goes back to brain stuff that we were talking about. Too, yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. So. Yeah. And, well, think about this. Imagine sitting too close to your screen, getting a negative effect and you hate your job. Mm-hmm. So that's like a double negative. A double whammy. Yeah. You're like, oh, this guy over here. And then the screen's over here yeah. whacking you out, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The um, oh, you reminded me of something when you said that the screen sitting too close. Uh, um, Red light therapy. Is yeah. that legit? Oh, yeah. We have one in our office. Glenn's it. my new best friend. I, I don't know why. I didn't know he had, he didn't tell me he had these things. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. We have it's, we have low-level laser therapy. It's red light. Okay. We have red and violet. Violet is violet is good at pulling out, like, all the emotions. For the really? Body. Yeah, it's so rad. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. We need to talk. We need to talk. <laughs> no, I, like, I'm gonna, I've only tried red light therapy once. Yeah. But I had an anxiety in the thing. And the reason why I got to tell you this, it wasn't because of the machine. Yeah. I think only one person knows about this. I think it's my friend Steve because it was, you know, um, Steve, Steve Martin. Yeah. Okay. So um, I had, wait, did I get knee surgery at the time? No, no. I had knee surgery and I wanted my knee surgery to recover faster. He goes, try hyperbaric chamber. Mm-hmm. You know, all, all this stuff. And I go, okay. The train lab. The train lab. Yeah. He goes, just go down there and tell them, you know, I'll, I'll set it up. Just go down there. So I went down to the training lab and I did, he, you know, cause it's Steve. They're like, yeah, man, whatever you want, sir. So they do it immediately. So they had the main tubes booked, you know, like the clear tubes where you can watch TV and they go, do you want to wait? And I go, oh, now I'll just try something else. They go, well, we have this uh, hyperbaric chamber available and it, it was so small. It looked like that chair fit in it. You had a, it's like you're in a chair, they slide your chair in it and it hugs and it has a tiny window like that little Titan submarine that got lost going to the Titanic yeah. when it imploded. Like that, dude. That's all. And the rest of it was steel. Yeah. And, yeah. And so I had that little window. And it was on the side. 
And they're like, well, we'll put Netflix on for you. You can look through the window. I go, sure. And you remember, jujitsu, um, it is a martial art where we're, your heart rate's going, your fight or flight might be kicking in, and someone's sometimes smashing you, you can't breathe. So I just assumed I'm not claustrophobic. I've been in some horrible situations there. You know, I could I could crawl through tunnels, MRIs, whatever, CTs, whatever it is, no problem. I get in this thing, and she goes, oh, the Netflix, for some reason, the, something was going on. Netflix wasn't working. And I go, it's all good, man. It's all good. So she slides me in there. And this girl's probably like, I don't know, 20 and maybe 100 pounds. She puts it in there, closes the steel door, and is like doing like submarine. Remember the other the tube ones are all, you know, they're nice. It's a quick lever. You're and in. You could see you could see out, right? Yes. Yeah. And and they're I mean, and it's just a quick release lever. It's yes. the easy re- This yeah. is old school. Kick, 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 kick. <laughs> You're like locked in there. Yeah, and I was like, what if this jams and she can't get me out? So I'm sitting in there in the tube. I mean, the little freaking, it's shaped like a shoe. Yeah. You know, because it got this shape, because I don't know what it's shaped like. Like a like a boot or something? Yeah, or a sideways candy corn. It's hard to explain. Yeah. Like, it's just, you know, I'm in there, and they pressurize it, and I'm like, there's nothing there. And all of a sudden, claustrophobia kicked in. Like, a few minutes, I was like, have you ever had claustrophobia before? I'm, I, up to that point, I didn't have it. Yeah. And I go... Oh man, I need to get out of here. And the girl had told me, if you need anything, just tap on the window. And so it was like five minutes in. I go, I knock. I'm supposed to be in there an hour. <laughs> I knocked on the, <laughs> I knocked on the Yeah, I knocked on the door. I was like, hey, um, I need out. And uh she was like, Are you okay? And I lied to her. All right, I lied to you, whoever you were working there. <laughs> I, li- I go, I feel nauseous. And she goes, um, and she was okay. She goes, okay, I go, can you let me out? She goes, yes. I go, all right, cool. She walks off. So I was like sitting here, I was like, ba 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 ba. And I was like, hey, I need out now. I, I mean, I'm coming out of my skin, man. Yeah. Like, and she goes, I can't let you out right now. It has to depressurize. And I go, okay. I go, how long will that take? She was like, five minutes. I was thinking, crap, I'm, <laughs> can I double the time I've just been here? I literally pulled my knees to my chest. I had to do like centering, like box breathing, yoga breathing. I was like, and she let me out eventually. And I got, I felt like, I felt like I got rescued out of a damn submarine <laughs> off the bottom of the ocean. And then she was like, are you okay? Like she, I go, yeah, yeah. I just feel nauseous. Let me get my breath. She goes, you want to try something else? Or, or you want to try the tube? The tube's available. I go, no, no. She goes, here, try the red light therapy. And so I got in the I red know. light therapy. But I, I, my, I was already stimulated. I was laying yeah. down there. I was like, <laughs> what if this doesn't open? And it doesn't even close all the way. It just kind of sits above you. Yeah. And I was just tripping. I was I felt anxiety for the rest of the day. It tweaked, it messed me up. But going back, that was my red light therapy that experience. I don't know what kind of machine they had. Ours is literally just like wands that shine the light on you. Wands? Yeah, they're like little wands connected to the machine and shines the light right on the area. Oh, they're the, like they zoom in, like yeah. kind of hyper focused. You're not like in a in a Oh, his is like it looks like a tanning bed. Oh yeah, no. This one is different than what we have. There's many kinds. Okay. Yeah. 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 His is a tanning bed and it just, you put these <laughs> goggles on. Yeah. And um, it doesn't even close all the way. Like it just, it like the, the lid goes to here and there's like a, probably like a, maybe an 18 inch gap opening. And I mean, you could easily slide out with it. Yeah. I've seen those. Okay. Yeah. But I was like, uh, I was already tripping <laughs> off the submarine. I was like, what if this, <laughs> what if, what if, what if I go blind from these lights? Like my brain was just out. I was out of my mind, yeah. but it works though, right? I might try. I'm gonna try yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, I I had a patient. This was years ago. He was he played it for high school, I think, at at least on a high. Mm-hmm. Basketball, he loved basketball. Like that was his sport, right? At the beginning of the season, he had a really gnarly ankle injury. His ankle was bad, sprained, badly sprained, huge, and his team coaches or whoever trainers told him he was out for the season. And he came in and saw me, and I was like, hey, let's just do this light, this laser on you every day. Come in every day. We'll do it for 20 minutes. And within three weeks, he was back on the court playing. Two weeks, I think, actually. Oh, wait a second. He got healed 100 and yeah, and that was years ago. We just opened our office, so like 20 years ago. So now he's in his 30s. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding No, you. no, you're making me feel old. And he's our, like, he's our... Like, we are his two-go doctors. Like, now he's got he's married, he's got kids, he brings them all in to see us, because he's like, I will never forget that you fixed my ankle and 
two weeks when they told me I was out for the season. Okay, do you know what? I think I've like, done that's this before. Rad, right? That is. That's absolutely amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. And that's not Western medicine, right? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. The, the, it's. <laughs> I think I've done what you're talking about. I'm thinking low light laser. Uh, low level laser. Low therapy. level. Yeah. I've done that. You have. I've torn both my growing muscles at the same time. Yeah. Um, are you familiar with jujitsu? Yes. You know how people push the legs to push the guard? Yes. Blew out both my growing muscles at the same time. Ouch. And I couldn't even walk right. And I went to a guy, I um, can't remember his name right now. He's in Silver Lake. Uh, I wish I knew his name. I can't remember it. And uh, he low light lasered there. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it breaks up scar tissue too, right? Does it? Break up scar tissue, but it helps the cells to produce more energy, which helps with healing. So it like regener it literally regenerates like tissue. Yeah. It fixed me so quick. I mm-hmm. think I was back training, I think a week later. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if I was hundred percent healed, but there was no pain, there was nothing. So I just was being cautious. But yeah, he treated me for for a few weeks like that. Mm-hmm. And you no, know, that stuff works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's rad. No, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's something I de- I need so much stuff done. <laughs> like I got in a car accident, and I'll stop talking about me after this one. <laughs> I got in a car accident, <laughs> and it was pretty bad. Uh, I think it's settling out actually this 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 month. I think, like they're they're agreeing to pay some stuff. And what they had to do was they had to um, scan my spine, my whole body, and just from being active, I have arthritis in different parts of my neck, mm-hmm. like significant, and then bulges in the discs. <laughs> And they're like, you don't feel that? And I'm like, no, I don't. But then I realized, wait a second. When I had blew my knee out and I couldn't exercise for like a uh, move a lot, I started feeling it. Mm-hmm. You know, like I became stiff. My back was back pain. But as long I've noticed as long as I stay active, I have all my flexibility and everything. So, but maybe I wonder if low light laser could help with the neck, like or arthritis pain. I don't know. Yes. It can. Yes. I'm marrying Glenn. I'm marrying him. I was going to say movement is healing. So a lot of people do have really gnarly issues in their back. And in fact, most people do, but they just don't, they're asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. Um, And the more physically active you are, in my opinion, like the less you heal. Usually, unless it's like a major blowout of your disc, you know? Yeah. Is there, is there a way, is there a treatment to add flexibility to someone? You know, like how people stretch you or mm-hmm. I know ART can help. Mm-hmm. Is there stuff like that like, besides ART? Because ART is expensive. At least the place I go to. It's in Irvine. And I mean, guys- AR- my understanding of ART is you're like literally breaking up trigger points. It's like trigger point therapy, like act- active release. It's Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like so, so save my knee. Oh, you know, I use Steve. Before Steve's surgery, he couldn't bring his knee up to his chest or yeah. even... Up to his knee parallel with his hip. Yeah. The guy got in there and released it and he could bring it up real high mm-hmm. in one session. Mm-hmm. But it's just expensive. Mm-hmm. Is there other protocols besides that or is that the, the only way they're releasing? Well, I mean, other than stretching at home on mm-hmm. your own. So we have a, it's called a percussor. It's a percussion treatment. It feels like a massage and it breaks up scar tissue, like deep seated scar tissue in your fascia. Mm. How about emotional? Does it? Scar tissue, does it? No, I'm just kidding. No, it doesn't I'm do kidding. that. I'm kidding. Any two will do that. <laughs> yeah, you'd be a billionaire no, if you had the percussor, the percussor will break up scar tissue in your fascia, which is very thin connective tissue that surrounds all your muscles and all your organs. So if you break up the scar tissue in the fascia, it will allow for more flexibility and mobility in your muscles. Okay, are those, you're talking about the guns that hit like this? Yeah, percussor? That's, you, yeah, that's like the ones you buy over the counter are very different than the one that we have. Okay. Yeah, because those are, like, more superficial. They're really good. Like, say you work out and you need to, like, loosen up your muscles. I use Mm -hmm. them at home after I work out. But the ones at the office are deep. They go, like, a couple of inches deep into the tissue and literally break. That's what's up. But it feels good. It feels – it's not painful. It's good. It's, like, a deep Okay. Yeah. Okay, I got way off the subject here, though. Sorry, I went down a – my, you know, no. I, I, because there's so much you, you, you have so much information that I want to pull out of you. And I know I, I'm sorry. I don't mean like I'm not trying to like, you know, bust it out on you. I don't no, know if it's you're good. Right. I love okay. it. Okay, cool. So I'm good. Cool. I'm good. So, but the okay. So going back to the gut brain, I think this is I think no, because this is important <laughs> stuff right here. The gut brain. Yes. If people are interested in the gut brain for mental health, mm-hmm. um, for so let's say just for example, specifically mental health, or. You know, if someone came to you and say, you know, their health is decent, everything's good, but they're just, 
Oh, dude, I, that's that's a I never mind. That's a complicated question because you'd have to run a bunch of tests and everyone's different. Because mm-hmm. I was trying to think of is there like a general baseline of advice that you could give people or that people could know like regarding their gut health and like like good habits to to incorporate in their life to help that would have a positive impact on their mental health. Does that make sense? Like if you made a brochure or like a book, mm-hmm. you know, like good uh, good mental health to your gut. That's mm-hmm. the name of it. Mm-hmm. Are there some baseline things that people should just be aware of? Like whatever you do, avoid this mm-hmm. and do more of this. Mm-hmm. In general, without being diagnosed, this would... Um, Specifically to help with the brain. Yes. Is that what you're asking? Yes. I don't know if that's a tricky one. I'm sorry. It's very tricky because, like I said, everybody is different. But if I had to make a brochure to yeah. avoid, I would say avoid genetically modified foods. All right. Genetically modified. Avoid. Or GM, also known as GMOs. GMOs. People, yes. Avoid sugar. All sugar? Processed white sugar. Okay. So, like... Brown sugar, that's still processed white sugar. I would right? do like a little bit of like, like I do coconut sugar in my coffee in the morning. That's what I use. Is that is that healthier than white sugar? It has a lower glycemic index, so yeah. Okay. Um, Usually like some like local honey would be okay. Mm-hmm. Organic maple syrup, that type of stuff is okay for sweeteners. Guava? In my opinion. Guava, yeah. In my, okay. Yeah, better than just avoid white processed sugar. Got it. Okay. Avoid alcohol. Avoid. Alcohol jams the the gut up and the brain at the same time. I mean, yeah. they're connected, but it, it damages both equal. Like it, it, it attacks both places at yeah. the same time, right? Yeah. There's, there's just no benefit to alcohol, in my opinion. I don't drink alcohol. I haven't yeah. touched alcohol since I was in high school. Good for you. Yeah, I don't That's mess rad. around. Yeah. yeah. It's literally like legalized poison you know it's like um anything that could kill you when you're trying to get off of it yeah that's bad (laughs) yeah totally (laughs) um okay of foods to avoid that i would for me avoiding okay going back to my brochure avoid food coloring avoid msg what's the deal with msg that that's getting tossed around people are trying to say nowadays more recently, people say, no, it's not that bad. Monosodium glutamate, it's just a sodium. It's just, but that's bad, it's right? It's a neurotoxin. Got it. Okay. Because it, when I. So is food coloring. Oh, I didn't know that. Neurotoxin means it literally is toxic to your nerves and your brain cells. Like, literally kills your brain cells. That's why I told my kids. <laughs> when they were little. Like, yeah, yeah. Literally kills your brain cells. Well, thanks, mom. No skittles <laughs> for us. Yeah, no way. Yeah. No way. My kids don't eat that. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, MSG used to give me migraines. Yes. So I stopped taking that probably my around 19 years old. I stopped mm-hmm. anything with MSG in it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So MSG. What about ultra-processed foods or processed foods? Does that affect the gut? Yes, because it's loaded with toxic chemicals. Okay. Right? It's not real food. Yeah, yes. That See... It's not I, real food. You're not <laughs> eating food. That doesn't grow in nature. Right. Yes. So those are the things you want to avoid, right? Wait, can I say something about processed food? Yeah. The reason why I thought it was bad is because I thought the body's like, what do I do with this? Doesn't know what to do with it. Because, like, in the history of humanity, all let's say our genetics are made up from our ancestors. Mm-hmm. There wasn't cheese thins or cheese whiz. So it doesn't know what to do with that. Correct. Is that right in thinking? Correct in thinking? Yes. Okay. Have you read that book, Food Rules? No. Food Rules, R-U-L-E-S, by Michael Pollan. No. He has a book, and in that book, it's very simple, and it just literally has rules of, like, what to eat. I love that book. I would go. I would refer to that Food book. Food Rules. Yes. Okay. One I'll check of the it out things he says is if your grandmother would have no idea what it is, just don't eat it. Right? Like, your, our grandmothers, great-grandmothers didn't know what Go-Gurt was. <laughs> Right, That's a good point, like yeah. what? Don't eat it, or like a fruit roll up, like just eat the real fruit, right? So that's one of the rules. Another rule, and this kind of goes back to like this little brochure that we're creating, right? Like avoid all that stuff, but then what to eat is just eat real food, right? Like Michael Pollan says, if it grows on a plant, eat it. 
if it's made in a plant, like a plant, mm-hmm. don't eat it. It goes back to the processed foods. Yeah. Just eat real food. And eat, like, if you eat from local organic farms, right? Like, I get my produce from South Coast Farms right here in San Juan Capistrano. I love them. It's a local... They're organic? There are... Some. So, in order to say you're organic, you have to pay a lot of money to the government and get all these certifications. And some of these small farms don't have the means to do that. Mm -hmm. So, legally, they can't say they're organic, but they are. Okay. Do you know what I mean? They use non-genetically modified seeds and they grow everything organically. Got it. Got it. And I know that. So, yeah. And I've been getting my produce from- What are they called again? South Coast Farms. South Coast Farms in, in San Juan? San Juan. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that just, do they only go locally or can someone say in Nevada get that? No, they're local. So if okay. it's any, wherever you are, there's going to be local organic farms. Just go to a farmer's market and they'll be there. Okay. Got it. Right. Well, well, yes, I don't mean to be controversial, but a few years ago, um, I'm not saying what, you, what you're saying is correct. Yes. I, I believe what you're saying. Yes. But I, just want, I just want to preface it with that. But a few years ago, um, I forget what the guy's name, but he used to do that uh, on the news in L.A. Like, you know, like, I don't I forget his name, but let's say his name's my name, Kenny okay. Tenney. He goes, yeah. Kenny Tenney on your side investigates. And what he would go is go to farmer's markets and he would test the organics to see if they're organics. Yeah. And like half of them weren't. But this was in Los Angeles. How would he test them? For chemicals. Oh. Yeah. I see. Or pesticides and stuff like that. So that's why, like, I love South Coast Farms because you have to kind of know your farmer. Yeah. Yes. Right? So yes. a good start is to go to a farmer's market, but get to know the farmers and get to know, like, how are they farming? What are their values? What are what do they believe in? Why are they small farmers? Like, they don't make any money. Like, why are they doing what they're doing? Yeah. So that's why I love South. I mean, I know Farmer George and Rebecca. I've been getting my produce from them for years and they're awesome people yes so you know find places like that or just do your Get homework or just do, do your, your homework. homework yeah do yeah. your homework because northern yeah. california i still live up there though they're definitely organic and even the grass fed like when you go get the milk from them you can literally see the cows walking around on the side of the hill yeah. just you know living their life they're not, it's not it doesn't look like a you ever drive up the five and you could mm-hmm. smell the industrial uh cow farms yes yeah, it doesn't look like that. They're literally walking around, and the milk has cream on the top. Yes. And they even put it in glass. They don't put it in um, plastic. In plastic. Good. So, yeah. yeah but sorry, I interrupted you. No, but that's perfect. Like, those are the kinds of places to find to, to get our food from. If you go to the grocery store, most of what you're getting is, like, you know, just... Have you, have you seen those movies where they show like what the chickens look like and like the cows look like? I've been to a I've been to an egg farm, a, a, okay. a Farmer John's. Yeah, it, it was it's, it's, took kids there as a field trip and it went bad because oh. we had no idea and the yeah. kids. Yeah, it was bad. bad. It turned into a nightmare for them. Yeah. Just eat real food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line. Well, you know what? It, it was interesting. There's a guy I can't remember. I don't remember his name. He was on Joe Rogan's podcast. And he was one of the founding farmers. This is for meat. Um, is that a still a farmer? Yeah, I think so. A farmer, okay. Yeah. Uh, for yeah. for meat, and he was the. Do uh, you know that grading system they have? Like mm-hmm. one, two, three, four. It used to be one and one and two. Mm-hmm. It was just this is grass fed, free range, organic or not. And um, since they were bought out by Amazon. They changed it. And that's why you see there's four steps. And he's explaining um, one through four, one through three, that's just regular grocery store stuff. You can go to Vons and get the same thing. It's just fancy wording that they put and mark up the price a little bit. And and now with farmers like him, the smaller farmers who stay true um, to the original, um, I forget what it's called, like guidelines, because they had guidelines to be to sell meat to um, Whole Foods before it went super corporate like it has, your farm had to be free of pesticides. You couldn't even you, you had to feed the grain. Had the grain had to be clean. Everything. So he spent years. Like it took like two years and a lot of money to modify everything to get it where it's at. Now they don't even do business with him because they buy most of their, their meat from these other farmers, and those farmers are uh, grow provide their meat for tyson it's the same company as tyson meats and all these other ones mm-hmm. he's explaining it's it's lost its um its value it doesn't mean anything mm-hmm. you know unless you buy all the way on the right you know the four but most of the meats there are one through three mm-hmm. 
which are, um, you know, how they had that rating system, mm-hmm. like cage with a window, yeah. you know, or stuff like that. Yeah. And then two cage window and outside time mm-hmm. a few hours a day. It's all the same crap. So it's pretty discouraging. Yeah. Um, it's pretty sad. So, yeah, I rarely even eat meat now. Yeah. I, I mean, not because of that. Yeah. You know, I just, I don't know. My appetite's kind of changed too, but I rarely eat meat. But when I do, I go grass, I go free range grass fed and you could taste the difference in the meat. And I heard that it, your body processes it different than grain fed, hormone shot up cows. You have to think that the, well, cows are meant to eat grass, not grains, right? Yeah. And then they're eating corn and soy, which is genetically modified. <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> and yes. then we're eating it. Yeah. And yeah. it's not as flavorful. No. Like it's, I mean, not the flavor <laughs> It matters, but it matters, but it does. Yeah, but that tells you that there's something off about this animal. Yes. Yeah. Even like pastured eggs, like pastured eggs mm-hmm. that come from ca- uh, chickens that are pastured, mm-hmm. they look different and they taste different. Yeah. I have a friend of mine. He's an MMA fighter. His name is Raja Shippen. And uh, he's, he's pretty well known. In, he's from Southern California. He's from Santa Ana, but he moved to Australia. And he's like a champion in Australia and Europe in MMA. But one time he came out here to visit and we were staying together out here in this little beach house in San, in Dana Point. Mm-hmm. And he was telling me that the eggs in Australia, like the yolk is like dark gold. Yeah. And it tastes better. Yeah. And he goes, I don't, it's weird. Like how do the eggs, why are they different here? I go, dude, it, has, it probably has to do with industrial farming. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, it's nuts, right? But I guess we're so blind here in America. We have no idea. We're so far removed. Like when we have a, a plate in front of us we're so far removed like from like where that this food actually comes from yes we don't think about it our brains don't even think about where did this actually come from what's in it yes yes and to take that a step further i have had some friends where i mean this might be a little too far in me trying to explain something to them or share an idea but some of them like i was like hey let's go to texas let's go hunting i want to go hunt some wild boar out there mm-hmm. And uh, they're like, man, how could you kill an animal? You know, and and I'm like, we're at the grocery store. And I'm like, dude, this is like a funeral home right here. This mm-hmm. is all dead animals. Just because you didn't kill it, just because it's packaged up in this little tray and the clean, someone slaughtered that thing. Mm-hmm. And they're, you know, some people are like, well, I didn't do it, so I don't have a guilty conscience. It's like, well, you're, I think you're splitting hairs here, man. I mean, yeah. if you wouldn't buy it, they wouldn't do it. Yeah. So it's the same totally. thing. Totally. And it's, I think it's healthier hunting something in the wild. But the wild boars, I wouldn't have eaten the boars. Yeah, I don't no. think I wouldn't have eaten the boars. And this, it, they're invasive in Texas, and they're and they're allowing people just for free. You don't even need a license mm-hmm. to go out there and shoot the boars. So it's like, oh, okay, well, yeah. I know. <laughs> just trying to do my part with help to environment. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, so the things you would eat for gut brain. Real food. Real food. That's it. Okay. Plain and simple, right? I feel like there's so much out there now with all these different kinds of diets, mm -hmm. the carnivore diet and the paleo diet and the keto or all vegan or whatever, you know, there's so many out there. And I just don't think that there's like one fits all type of thing, right? Like everybody's body is different. Yeah. And you need to listen to what feels good for your body like you're not eating as much meat because you're just do well with that right but there's a lot of people out there that thrive on eating a lot of meat Mm -hmm. and if you're going to do that make sure that it's good quality that you're not buying the all the industrialized meat that's out there and um and just eat real food you know like high quality proteins vegetables and fruits some nuts and seeds maybe but when you're saying eat real food do you make a distinction between uh, um, industrial farmed food, like say cows? Mm-hmm. Like, do you think there's a? Do you believe there's a difference between that and free range? Yes, that's what I was saying. So, eat. just free range yes. meats. Yes. Okay, because some people don't realize that they'll eat like, like there's guy people you know like some of my friends do uh, CrossFit and they're quote unquote strict mm-hmm. and they'll eat just vegetables and whatever, but the the farm the meat whatever is the best price it kind of drives me crazy that people will be like oh i'm i'm paleo right a lot of crossfitters like to be paleo mm-hmm. and they'll say um i'm i'm eating this high protein diet right and then they'll 
oh, they'll go and get the cheapest meat that's out there. <laughs> and yeah, the short term results are great because you're slimming down and you're bulk, you know, whatever. But like the long term effects of what you're eating, I don't think is very good. Yeah. I've seen people that like, has co- you know, social media, hashtag clean eating. And like it's, 75% of the plate is like really horrible quality meat with a little bit of vegetables. And I'm like, there's nothing clean about that meat. Nothing. Like, you know, did you get it from the f- local farm down the street that you saw the cow and then you're eating that? That's totally different than like going to Vons and buying what's prepackaged and you're yeah. getting all the chemicals in your body from that cow. That's that's true, right? right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not tripping when I say that. You, yeah. you, you're taking in whatever's in that meat, right? Yes. Okay. I I mean this you're probably gonna think I'm crazy, but I even too late. Yeah, you're right. No, I'm just kidding. Em, okay, we talk about how we hold on to emotions, right? Uh huh. Think about the emotions that those cows had. Think about the fear that they have when they're getting ready to be slaughtered. Or that you know, are we taking on that? I don't know. Just put you know, that out there. No, no. You know? I, I feel you. <laughs> well, well it is true that the animals I know that um I think there's a show called Meat Eater. Have you seen that? Mm-mm. This guy named Steve Ranella. Don't let, don't let the name fool you. He's actually a conservationist. Okay. But what he does is he goes hunting with locals. Like he went to the Amazon uh-huh. and he just walks through the jungle and he's hunting with the locals wherever they shoot and eat. Uh-huh. He eats with them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And he just talks about their diets and the animals. But on a side note, before I go into this, there's one time he went to the Amazon. He was in the Amazon one of those episodes. And uh, he's an American guy. And uh, highly educated, very articulate has a country accent, and he goes, man, one thing I noticed different about hunting in the United States as opposed to hunting, like, with uh, indigenous people in the Amazon is that, like, we go, hey, we're going to go hunting for elk. Uh-huh. He said, these guys are hunting for anything. Yeah. And and they literally, they shot a monkey. And <laughs> they shot a monkey. And ate it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they shot a monkey. And he was talking to the camera, he goes, I don't know if I can eat this. <laughs> he was kept saying that, but it's very disrespectful. And it's weird because what they did with the monkey was, oh, before I can go to the monkey, he goes, they were listening and the the jungle's loud because there's just all kinds of noises, but they know every noise. So they're like, they're talking to each other like, okay, there's there's a monkey, oh, there's some monkeys over here. There's, and to him, it just sounds like, wah, 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 you know, birds and animals and insects moving. So they shot the monkey, they put it on a spigot. I think that was called, right? When you stick over the fire and they roll it just to burn the hairs off. And you can see that you're watching this on the show. It's season one of uh, Meat Eater. And they bring the hair. look like a five-year-old kid. Like it, it's arms around his back. And then from there, they just kind of, you know, chop the arms off this and that, put it in the, a big pot with plantains. They made a stew. And he just out of respect, he ate it. But he's like, I'm never going to eat this again. I'll never. He talks after I'll never do that again. But he says it was delicious, though. Yeah. <laughs> it was very good. But... um. I forgot while I was telling you that. Um, meat eater, plantain. I don't know. I don't know why I told I forgot. Quality my... of the meat, maybe, like that we were talking about eating, like going out and hunting. Your meat oh, yeah, yeah. Like he was point- at the store. On other episodes, he talks about shooting an animal. It's best to kind of get them when they're not um, filled with adrenaline because mm-hmm. the meat tastes different. Mm-hmm. You know, so he tries to, you know, like they're looking off and they're dead mm-hmm. as opposed to chasing them or stressing them out. He goes, that affects the quality of the meat, mm-hmm. you know. So going back, I think there is some validity to what you're saying about there is an effect of how the animal felt when it died, mm-hmm. which ties into something else. I had knee surgery, and I thought about the same thing you're thinking about. I have cadaver parts in my leg. Yeah. Yeah. And, my, like, I even have my ACL is someone else's Achilles tendon. Yeah. They made it thicker, and they put some other stuff. That's crazy. And I'm thinking, who was it? And my friends, some of my friends have dark humor. goes, it was like a prostitute that like got murdered. And I was like, golly, dude. I never would have even <laughs> thought about that. Yeah, but I have all that. Cr- yeah, I was like, well, I don't think, I hope not. I mean, well, well it's too late you. now. <laughs> Thank you for donating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it was oh just, I said, I'm going to assume it's a motorcycle person. Yeah. Because that's usually go. the, the, that's the main donors. Yeah. I, but I just want to like, I'm not anti meat. I want to make that clear. Like, I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not plant-based like like i said earlier i very just eat real food like yeah you know and and i keep talking about the meat because the quality of the meat that's out there is so bad but then all the vegetables that are out there too are sprayed with chemicals you know yeah 
um, pesticides. Yes. You just have to be careful. Oh, no, I'm with you on that. I'm I'm down the rabbit hole so far where you even we have, um, what's that company? And I'm not trying to bash, and these are allegedly, I just wanted to preface allegedly, but is it Monsanto's? Monsanto. Monsanto. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, like some of the stuff they put in, you know, they use as pesticides and herbicides, because I didn't know there was a difference. Mm-hmm. So the pesticides, and to explain, herbicides are made to kill plants, certain plants, but not others, mm-hmm. but it's toxic, or sometimes wipe out all plants. Mm-hmm. And then the pesticides, obviously, to kill pests like insects. For some reason, I thought it was all the same. Mm-hmm. But um, it's to the point where it's gotten to the groundwater, the chemicals. Mm-hmm. And especially if you live near a, a golf course, because they use a lot of herbicides. Mm-hmm. And then farming, which, you know, there's a time I spent living in Central California and in Bakersfield. And they, it has to be in the groundwater there mm-hmm. because um, Bakersfield was mostly farms. It's still a big chunk of, the, of it is farms. And so now I use a 11-stage uh, reverse osmosis filter. And there's even a tester that I have that tests what's in the water once it comes out. But I don't do it all the time. I only test it um, once I get my filter serviced to make sure it's working. But then I'm back to normal. But it, it affects, I know there's uh, the chemicals, what they call residuals, mm-hmm. uh, can get into the water and cause like endocrine endocrine system, endocrine disrupting um chemicals Mm -hmm. you know and cause reactions and i know there's a doctor he actually got sued by monsanto um he didn't lose he was a he was a researcher out of uc davis no uc berkeley and he was showing he did a research of the what the residuals in the water and he raised tadpoles in them and some of them started developing both genders or even with gender change some of the frogs would have you ever seen that research yeah um the head of um, the one who made me aware of it was Coach Cal, who's the head of the training lab. Mm-hmm. He showed me this, like sent me a few videos, and I went down the rabbit hole. And he actually got sued. He actually worked for Monsanto's as a researcher for the chemicals, and he presented this information to them. They said thank you, and then nothing happened. So he quit and went public with it, and not against them, but just in general speaking. And they sued him to try to silence him, but he didn't. He didn't lose. Okay. I, I think. I think. Um, I mean, he just a lot spent a lot of money defending himself, but he didn't win anything because he was a defendant. Yeah. But yeah, so no, I'm I'm I get what you're saying. It's so to protect your gut or your body. But let's let's say the gut one is nothing artificial mm-hmm. from food coloring to um, anything else, ultra processed or processed. It doesn't have to be ultra, right? Just processed foods. Mm-hmm. So you want food that's not processed that you could buy how you'd mm-hmm. find it in nature. And when it comes to meat, stay away from industrial farming. Mm-hmm. Would that be correct? Correct. And then I'm just doing a summary. Yes. <laughs> and then um, sugar. Stay away from refined white sugar. Yes. And just moderate your sugar intake in general, though. Would that be correct? Correct. Yeah, because I know this was done. Oh, I believe, if I remember correctly, this was done by the sugar industry. Because CNH used to be a very powerful lobbying uh, uh, industry and you guys could you could look this up online they actually um, used to lobby with the government on changing the nutritional panels mm-hmm. you know they're responsible for you know on a nutritional panel there's no RDA for sugar mm-hmm. no recommended daily allowance everything else a vitamin C there's 9% protein there's 18% fiber sugar it just says grams and you have no idea mm-hmm. and over time they made things uh, what do you call it um, significantly more sweeter they added more sugar to the ingredients and sugar is highly addictive. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that either. Mm-hmm. I didn't know it was addictive until I actually I cold turkey tried to stop. I went through withdrawals mm-hmm. off of sugar. Oh yeah. It's gnarly. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. You're you hurt. Like you hurt like yeah. a fever. Like your bones hurt, your uh, migraines. Headaches. Headaches. Oh, horrible migraines, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I have to ask you this too, because you're a chiropractor. Regarding the spine, yes. How much of our health does the spine affect? Besides say the integrity of our body, right? Holding our body up and preventing, you know, pinch, excluding like pinched nerves. Actually, I, I, you're probably gonna get mad at me about this, but I diagnose somebody, armchair diagnose somebody at, at my, I go to Lifetime Fitness around the corner. Yeah. Diagnose a lady at the gym. She's like, man, I've been going to a physical therapist for my, for my, um, for my shoulder and I'm two months and it's not working. And I said, well, what happened? She goes, I fell and I put my hand down, like like she slipped and put her hand down and got yeah. up and her shoulder hurt, but she gets like 
numbing, burning sensations up her neck and around her ear. I go, that sounds like a nerve. Yeah. I said, your neck might have like popped to the side. Mm-hmm. I said, you need to go see a chiropractor, dude. Yeah. Good. I said, the physical therapy. <laughs> so, okay. I armed because I've, I've been through enough of physical therapy to yes. know that's why it didn't work. Mm-hmm. And I said, if you're, sh- if it was just your shoulder, usually the pain would just be localized. Mm-hmm. But if you're getting zingers up your neck and headaches mm-hmm. and stuff like that, it's a neck issue. It's a neck issue. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I should let me know if you need someone to come practice at your office. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so but besides that, things like that. How what else is it? I mean, that might be mo- almost everything I covered of the spine. But wh- how does the spine affect the health, a person's health? You know. Okay, so from what I've seen, just getting the spine aligned with adjustments will fix about seventy percent of all problems. Okay, that somebody has. The reason being is because the way that the brain communicates through to the body is through the central nervous system, which is through the spinal cord and the nerves. And Mm -hmm. your spine protects that. So if your spine's out of alignment and there's pressure on the nerves, the brain can't communicate to the organs efficiently. Got it. So getting getting an alignment feels good if you've had like injuries or you're tight, your muscles aren't working properly. But more importantly... When the spine is straight and moving properly, like each segment is moving the way that it should, the brain cannot communicate to the organs because that's how the body works. It's the nervous system. What? Well, okay. All right. And that could affect you. And so that could affect not just nerve pinching, but no. okay, the communication, which will affect the your organ overall function. health. Organ function. Organ function. Yes. Okay. Glandular function. Your thyroids, your adrenals. And it's bad for a person to adjust themselves. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, because <laughs> I, I I think I figure out how to do it to myself. Yeah. And I do it sometimes, but there's one thing I do, and it makes me sick. I mean, it physically makes me nauseous. Yeah. And I'm nauseous for probably the rest of the day, like off and on, is because sometimes I keep the bend in the neck because if if it gets tight, I'll just do this and go, and and pop it a little bit. But there's been times where my neck is just so stiff, and I I need to train. And what I've learned is. If I take my fingers and push my neck side to side like this a lot, mm-hmm. or, oh, no, no, side to side, just get the, the neck to move in there a lot, I feel relief, but then I feel nauseous. Like maybe I released a lot of toxins, mm-hmm. and I feel like that for the rest of the day. Yeah. Is that toxins coming out? It or? could be. Okay. It could be, yeah. Crap, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what do I do? And I've done that twice because I'm not thinking. Like the second time I wasn't thinking, I was like, oh, my neck. And I just started like moving it side to side. Yeah. You know, or I'm moving my neck like that yeah. and, and, ju- and a lot. Yeah. And then I I'm mean, like, it's, it's okay to stretch it out and, and do that a little bit. But if you're getting nauseous, you're doing it too much. Doing it too much. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like <laughs> me. All right. Well, um, okay. All right. So, um, in summary, gut brain's connection, very important. Yes. Very important. Um, and the sec, it's, uh, we talked about it's the second brain of mm-hmm. the body. I forgot to ask you this. The second brain, do you know how people get a bad gut feeling about other people? Mm-hmm. Is that legit? Is that the second brain kicking in? Is that what they mean or no? I believe it is, but I'm crazy. I be I never thought about that, but it could be. Yeah, you're like, oh, are you about to do something? You're like, oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah. You don't do it. You go, I kn- like I should have listened to my gut. Yeah. Because gut feelings, it seems like there's some validity to yes. it if you're really in tune with yourself. Yes. There is. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you never thought of it that way? Well, I always just think that, like, God's trying to tell me something. Like that gut Through feeling. your gut. Through your gut. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. And um, so it's like a second brain. And it is very important. Your gut health is important as health of any other part of your body, right? Because I think it's overlooked and a lot mm-hmm. of people don't think about it. Mm-hmm. And one thing, too, about the gut. How often, not to get a little TMI, but I'm going to get some TMI here. How often should someone have a bowel movement, say, per week or per day or whatever? Ideally, like, this is ideal. Like, if you're eating three meals a day, poop three times a day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ideally. My my goal with patients is to get them to go at least once a day because most people don't poop that often. Yeah. Well, before I had to take antibiotics, I had a severe sinus infection and my doctor tried everything. Last resort, I already had a fever. My face swole up. He goes, we're going to have to do antibiotics. It's too far at this point. Gave it to me. Prior to it, and this was just in December, I would go after each meal. I'd have to go number two, Mm -hmm. like a baby. Mm -hmm. Now, it's like once a day and it doesn't, 
you know, it's Did not the same. Probiotic. You said you take probiotics. I took a recovery, Garden to Life, their five day emergency. Yeah. But I think I'm. I need probably need to hit you. I need to hit you up okay. and figure out because I'm. I'm just not. Yeah. I'm not all the way right yet. Okay. So, what's a red flag if someone's not poop having a bowel movement? So this many days, like oh, you should see someone. Is well, there, I think is, is you should a, have one at least once a day. Okay, let's say someone's going every three. Yeah, no, that's not good. You need to see a professional. Yes. Okay. 100%. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm just trying to get people markers <laughs> yes. so they know. Because um, I know, I don't want to put her out there. There's a woman I know. She probably goes once a week. And I'm like, you're going to get colon cancer. She goes, no, I've always been like this. And it's like, well, then you've always been jacked up. You need to fix that. Yeah. And, and if that's all sitting in your gut, that's a lot of toxins. And your body's going to reabsorb that. And who knows what could happen long term. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I feel, I feel uh, you. That's... And she eats a lot. Like, she's overweight and goes once a week. Yeah. So toxins are stored in fat tissue, in adipose tissue. So if she got her gut working to where she's actually going to the bathroom mm -hmm. and getting rid of the toxins through her bowels, like our bodies are meant to do. Yes. Then her body won't need the fat tissue to store all the toxins. So she'll probably lose weight. Too. Does that make sense? Yes. What is adipose? Fat. fat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Fancy word. <laughs> okay. No, I thought it was called like lipid. Or Lip, lo yeah. Lipid Lip adipose. Yes. Oh, okay. Lip lipids are fats. Adipose okay. is like the tissue. Oh, like the fat tissue. Fat tissue. Fat, fat tissue. Okay. So even exercising, burning the fat, really, if you do have toxins, it would release that stuff from your body, correct? No? Say, uh, say that again? Like, say if, if you're, you say... Toxins are stored in fat tissue. Uh -huh. So let's say someone who's overweight and uh -huh. they've ate, eaten toxic yeah. and it's in their fat. If they exercise and burn that fat off, that toxins can exit their body or does that make sense? Yeah. But if you're not going to the bathroom and you're not pooping, you're not getting rid of the toxins. So you could exercise. You know how many people I know that like they come in and they're like, I'm exercising, I'm exercising. I'm not losing the fat. What's going on? Well, because you're not going to the bathroom, this goes back to gut health, right? Like you're doing mm -hmm. all the right things, but you're not eliminating the toxins through your bowels. So your body is toxic. So it has to store these toxins somewhere. So that's why your body's holding onto the fat tissue. Oh, okay. Okay. But if they, if they reverse it and they're going to the bathroom regularly yes. and eat clean and yes. exercise and start yes. losing fat, yes. body weight, yes. those to like that's not a dead scent. Like that toxic no. will come out if yes. you burn that fat off. Yes. Okay. And if you're going to the bathroom to get rid of the toxins through your bowels. Yes. Okay. And, and going to number two, too, it releases cholesterol, too, right? Like if you have high cholesterol, it kind of helps getting that out. Mm -hmm. Like that would actually raise your cholesterol then, right? If you're not going to the bathroom regularly. No. Yes. Because that's the only way cholesterol goes out, correct? Is yeah. that? Am I tripping? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It I fixed everything. That. Not going to the bathroom affects everything. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You, well, you don't want to be full of crap. Is you the don't want to be full of crap. Okay, no. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, I don't want to hold you up much longer because we, okay. we went kind of long here. Did we? But, yeah, well, I mean, we're, is it? One, we've done an hour and 40. We have? Yes. Oh. So, no, it's all good. <laughs> no, it'll go long. I've had some, sometimes I'm not paying attention. We have went like three hours. Okay. And then I, spl more than three. I've done three and a half. Then okay. I actually have to split it in two episodes. Okay. And people are like, what? <laughs> but, so, if people want to find you online... How can they find you? We have a website, www.deltawellnessgroup.com. Deltawellnessgroup.com. And it's spelled how it sounds, right? Mm -hmm. Deltawellnessgroup.com. All one word. All one word. And people can make an appointment with you there? They can call. Their phone number's there. They can call the office or email me. Okay, perfect. And is it's just you and your husband, Glenn, there? Or yes. is there others or no? It's just, just you two? us. It's no staff. So if they call... We will call back. Okay. <laughs> they won't get a live person. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's probably better to email then, yeah, too. Yeah, being an email. Yeah. Okay. And what all do you guys do there? Okay. So there's chiropractic, medicine, nutrition. Um, the kinesiology one, I forget what it's called. Applied kinesiology. Applied, I was thinking active. Applied kinesiology. Is there, is there anything else? And NET, which is the neuroemotional technique. NET. Yes. Oh, yeah. And the low light. The and low level laser therapy. Low, low level yes. laser. Perfect. Yeah. yeah I'm going to go there. And actually, I'm going to give feedback online about it, too. I'm pretty sure awesome. you guys are legit. 
yeah. you have to be legit. I see the car Glenn drives around. You guys are doing good. <laughs> So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys know what you're doing over there. Thanks. And um, fun. yeah, I love it. Is there anything you want to add before we go? Our social media does your um, does Delta Wellness Group have a social media handle or anything? No, but um, Instagram. I'm just Dr. Supna. How do you spell that? D R S U P N A. Oh yeah, yeah. What's up? Supna, Supna. Okay, um, cool. I do have two more things I sure. want to add because yes. we, we started with gut health and it's kind of evolved into a lot of other things. Yeah, no, take your time. But it's these, all are, good. these are things that I always tell like my patients because they're both such huge parts of the healing process. Mm -hmm. One of them is grounding. We kind of touched base on that. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. Yeah. Yes. Taking your, your socks and your shoes and your socks off and getting your feet on earth for at least six minutes a day minimum. Yes, and in my opinion, six yes, minutes. I've 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 got into grounding. Yeah, um, you have a grounding mat. Yes, I got into grounding, but I also ground outside because a grounding okay. mat is kind of like a substitute. Yes, um, and very I'm, healing. Yes, and especially with inflammation. Yes. Yeah, because one thing that um, people don't realize, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is my understanding of it, is that in modern times, the homes we live in, they're different than how we were uh, in any time in history. Mm -hmm. People before were more in contact with the earth. And we'd walk on grass or lay on the grass or dirt or whatever. But now we everything's concrete and then we're um, wearing shoes or rubber soles or non-conductive. And the earth, there is a frequency there. And our body, our body's in tune with everything. It's designed to exist in a natural environment. And most modern society is not a natural environment. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to um, get that in a kind of, and I think that's why some people, they like, just even at the beach sitting and digging their feet into the sand, there's something soothing about that. Or people go camping and they don't know why. They just really like being in nature and camping. It's that you're getting grounded. Yes. Okay. Yes. So grounding. Grounding. And the second one is um, gratitude. 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 I don't journey. believe in that. You don't believe in that. <laughs> Gratitude's overrated. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Keeping a gratitude journal at night. Or in the morning, whatever works best. Write down five things that you're thankful for every day. And there's something about writing it down. A lot of people like to do it in the morning. I like to do mine at night, mainly because I like to find the little things in life that I'm thankful for, right? Because, like, there's so much that we have that we definitely take for granted, right? A big house. I mean, I have a house. I have a bed. I have food. And not everybody has that, right? Oh, yeah. Um, but... Sometimes we forget about the little things, like the guy who opened up the the door for me at the grocery store, or that stranger who smiled at me as I was walking by, or that really cool tree that I never noticed before, yeah. or that butterfly that was really beautiful, right? Like all these things that are in front of us every day, and we're so busy just doing life that we forget mm. about it. To, we, we just don't even stop to notice, you know, stop to smell the roses, right? Yeah. You know, our kids, I remember when my kids were little, it would take me 20 minutes to get from my front door to my car because, like, every single little roly-poly they saw, they had to squat down and look at. <laughs> they appreciated that. We need to get back to that. So I feel like if I'm writing it down at night, it, throughout the day, I'm more mindful of paying attention to those little things because then I'm going to go home and write it down. And it makes me keep, it slows down my day helps me to be more present and be more thankful. And that is so huge because a lot of what's going on with people's health these days is that they're just in this me, me, me mindset and just going through life, getting things done, and they just don't really stop to, like, appreciate the beauty of life that we have right now. They're just hung up in fear with what's going on in the world, things they have no control over, and that makes them literally physically sick. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Well said. Well put. Um, it's interesting you say that because I've been back and forth. I've experienced both. And um, I had an English teacher in college that she was kind of like this hippie. She would actually sit on her desk and teach like Indian style, sit on her desk and be like these flowing, uh, you know, dress, yeah. you know, whatever. And just like, yeah, blah, blah. You know, what I want you guys to do today is just go out and just look at the sky. Just like you did when you were a kid. Do you remember laying on the sidewalk or whatever and you just look up? Do start doing that again. And so I, that made me 
at a young adult, early 20s, start thinking about it, but then his life beat the crap out of me. I remember after beforehand, you and I were talking about therapy and EMDR. After that first session at EMDR, I walked out of there and I could, because I was present again, yeah. but like almost in HD <laughs> and I could feel the wind on my skin. Mm. I'm like, oh, that's... yeah. And, and I remember there's this cactus um, that's by my house <laughs> and I just stared at it. I go, man, I've, it's been here this whole time and look how beautiful it is. And I don't like cactus, but this one it had like the little flowers on it, mm-hmm. you know, and all this crap. And I remember I called my friend. My friend called me to check on me. He goes, you sound like you're on mushrooms. <laughs> I go, well, I just been free. Like I'm present, you know, and there's, there's something healing about being present, you know, or healthy, not even healing, just healthy being present. You don't realize you're not present until you become present. It's almost, you only could tell retrospectively, mm-hmm. you know, when you're out of it, you don't realize, yeah, you wake up, get in your car, like say a typical Southern Californian commute one hour, go to work, sit at a computer, have the freaking beams <laughs> kill you, you know, give negative beams, <laughs> get back to your car, car, commute home, get something to eat, maybe watch TV, then go to bed. And that's at least Monday through Friday. And you're not present. You're, there's no, you know, and you, oh, one other thing, you know what's made me present too? When COVID hit, mm-hmm. when they shut everything down, I they don't build where I'm at. I'm over there by, um, you know where Gelson's is in Rancho Mission Viejo up the 73? There's Gelson's, mm-hmm. Antonio, whatever. Mm-hmm. I live over there. Yeah. And I remember like, well, after the first or second week, I thought this is going to last a while. You know, because at first I thought, oh, they're going to shut things down for a week. I didn't realize it was going to go so long. I took the scope. I have, a, I have a hunting rifle. I took the scope off my rifle. And I was like, well, I would just go out and look at nature because there's a place where they don't. I was watching hawks fly around birds argue you know and it i felt like a kid again but it felt good yeah yeah you know coyotes just doing whatever coyotes do a lot of i know what they do a lot is they pee on stuff a lot they're just walking around marking territory but it just felt good and i felt present like wow you know this is actually it's good to take this time out and, and it gives i think that time out caused a lot of people to shift in their thinking you know some people didn't return to their jobs they're like what well, i've been a waiter 15 years what am i doing Mm -hmm. i don't want to be a waiter forever Mm -hmm. i can't even spend time with my kids because my job Mm -hmm. i'd rather just reduce my standard of living and be with my kids more Mm -hmm. you know it gave a lot of people a shift in perspective and i think that had to do with with, like you said tying it back with your kids Mm -hmm. when you actually be present and stare at a roly-poly long enough and you start noticing like yeah what am i doing because as a parent what are we thinking oh i gotta drop them off and i gotta be at work and i got these patients coming in and i got this and this and because I got to be able to, you know, because it all boils down to act to our bills. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so, yeah, I just ran there. When my, no, it's all good. I, I just made me think of when my kids were at we homeschool now. But when my kids were at school, they were at a like a Waldorf inspired school, mm-hmm. which is all like, I don't know if you're familiar with Waldorf. Yeah, I am. Yeah. OK, so my older son's teacher was amazing. And she would we would go on these field trips and all the field trips. She would do what's called a quiet sit. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget this because I, I would go on all the field trips with him and she would spread all the kids out in nature and they would be apart from each other and then us parents would be kind of where we could see them and we literally would just sit quietly for 20 minutes in nature, no noise, no phones, mm-hmm. which is hard to do, right? I know. As an adult, um, literally looking at and listening to nature and you notice you could hear the wind, you could see the the leaves and the way that they're floating in the wind and notice the different colors and textures of all the leaves and hear the birds and hear the singing and hear the rustling and the bushes. And it's so calming. And then when the pandemic hit, right. And all the kids were home, my Jaden's teacher, I remember sent an email and the first like order of business was she wanted to know where the kids quiet. it was going to be at home every morning. She wanted them to get up and go outside, find a spot, do a quiet sit for 20 minutes before they came in and did any work, which I loved, right? So my kids did that, and we still do that. I wake up in the morning. I'm like, you go. the first thing you do is you go outside. I don't care how cold it is. You don't have to go all the way out. Just go outside and, like, at least take a breath of fresh air. Don't just start getting to, you know, yeah. life. Just sit out there. Take your Bible. Read. Get the fresh air. You know, so that's something that's so important. And people laugh at that. Like some people mock that. 
Like they don't see the value in kids or adults doing that. You know, they're kind of like, oh, please, I got stocks to trade. I don't got time for that. And they don't <laughs> realize like, man, no, it's your, yeah. me- your mental and physical health is more valuable than anything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't think, I think it's hard to see the value in it until you do it and you see how it drastically changes your life, you know? Yeah. Or unfortunately for some people they have to go through health issues before they sit down and like reprioritize things. Yeah. Right. Well, sometimes like they, you know, sometimes God lets things happen to people or to us to get our attention. Mm -hmm. I'm like that. I'm very hard headed. Mm -hmm. Um, not hard headed. Like I could be convinced of anything, but like, hard-headed like i really like doing this i'm not gonna stop like i'm not gonna stop eating candy then i get sick and i go oh, okay i'm gonna stop eating candy <laughs> i'm hard-headed like that <laughs> so um some i've it most of the big changes in my life i'll say all the big changes in my life have come from something drastic happening yeah, yeah. little subtle like talking to, well no yeah well, drastic changes but like dietary like smaller things or even talking to you today i'm like okay i'm gonna try these things you know, but even to get to this point, I think that people have to be more, more, I don't know, like self-love. Oh well, yeah. I think it boils down to loving self-love. And I don't think some people don't realize that, um, like they'll encourage someone else to do it or other people to get help, but they don't do it themselves. I think sometimes people need to, is it called self-love or just investing in yourself? Yeah. Yeah. I think people, I, that's something that's at, at least in the Western you know, in yeah. the United States, it's something that people don't value, mm-hmm. you know, and the ones that do, they just seem kind of hippies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I always think like, like God gave me this body and he's in this body with me and it's a temple. Right. And so it's, I want to honor God by taking care of my body. Yeah. It's huge to me personally. God gave me a beater. I'm a, it's <laughs> it's not perfect, right? But my, like my I exercise, I eat healthy, like you know. Yeah. So just do what you can. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. I just like I always get up because I used to. I I love my hair. It's gone now. Yeah. Off the top, so I'm not gonna do the comb over <laughs> and try to take pictures of angles. I'm like it's it's, it's gone. But I miss it. Yeah. And I was like, come on, God, you made me short. Can I at least keep the hair? <laughs> Man, but hey, you know, maybe I'd become too powerful. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That's why I say I got a beater. Yeah. But he knows I don't mean it. Oh, I kind of mean it, but you know, I don't. <laughs> yeah. But no, that's cool. I, I, I agree. Like, um, you're actually talking to me right now. It's making me think like I need to, I need to go out more because it's been cold and I haven't been outside, but I have my, my, um, grounding blankets plugged in, but it's not, is that as, it's not as effective, is it? Or is it close? No, it blank? works. It no, works. it's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, to me, I just personally like to go, but I know I'm blessed where I live in Southern California. Right. Yeah. Not everyone has that. I get to go down to the beach every day. Like I could walk to the beach and get my feet in the sand every day if I wanted to. Not That's every, what's up. Not everybody can do that. Right. It, exactly. Yeah. I get that. So you do what you can. Yeah. Some people are shoveling snow and. Dude, my friend lives in Idaho, and she gets out there and gets her feet in the snow. She's grounding. Yeah. Really? Yes. In the snow? Yes. That is the hardest part to deal with cold, in my opinion. Yeah. That's She'll the hardest part to get deal with coldness. She'll do it. Wow. She's hardcore, she's man. She's hardcore, man. She's got yeah. a garden out there, and she'll get out there. I mean, Bear. she's not out there for, I mean, I'm talking a few minutes, right? Still. She, I know. Have you ever been, like, in an ice tub? The feet are the worst part. <laughs> Like the last I'm saying, I can stick my butt in. I can stick yeah. my arms, my head, my feet. It hurts. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's so sensitive under there. I'm yeah. like, wow. I mean, people get their whole bodies in those cold plunges. Yeah, know? that was the goal, but yeah. the feet are the hardest for me. <laughs> like, like even my my one of my uh, he's my coach professor. Um, his name's Carlos. He uh, Carlos Gracie. Mm-hmm. He, he when he gets the cold plunge, he puts um those um booties on that uh scuba divers wear oh, for the cold plunge because the feet his feet can't take it he's like yeah. dude it's just my feet cannot take the cold the every the other body. body can i said i feel you yeah. yeah so that's interesting you say that do you have any other advice you like <laughs> sure I, i'm trying to pay. i gotta i gotta get it all out of you while we're here while you're here i think i said a lot already <laughs> okay cool good cool 
All right, so we have that, the grounding. Um, and one thing, too, the grounding mat, if anyone's interested, uh, I got mine off of Amazon. You could buy them off of, um, you know, different sites and so forth. But there's some good companies that sell on Amazon. And But as usual, there's companies on there that sell garbage. So be sure to, you know, vet out the um, the company that's providing it. Mine provides actual videos of um, showing the, with a meter. They meter test them to see if they're actually grounding to the to the um, uh, to the uh, what do you call it to the socket. And how a grounding blanket works is that I you know your your socket at home has three plugs. That center plug it only plugs into that one. So that your how everyone's house is grounded to the earth, mm -hmm. which is ironic, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, not ironic, but interesting, coincidental, whatever the word is. Um, so you, you plug your blanket into there and you don't have to get a full bed blanket. You can actually just get a pad where you can put your feet on it and barefoot while you're working at home or if you're watching TV, you just, but you need skin to touch it and it's woven into it is like silver or Cop is it copper? copper or something. Yeah. I don't know. Something's woven copper. I thought it was copper. But okay. I maybe copper. Wrong. I might be wrong too. I don't know. There's some type, type of conductive yes. material yes. <laughs> that's woven in there. <laughs> and, um, I have one more question before we go though, okay. if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's woven in and it just grounds your body and it's good to I'd recommend doing because we're exposed to so much electronic stuff you need to almost discharge it I would guess and and to explain the importance of discharging people who work in computers know this people who work with not just not computers think of uh, programming but people who put hardware together because they have to ground themselves mm -hmm. they're literally hooked themselves up to a wire that grounds them to the building as they work on your computers because not being grounded would literally destroy the internal parts of a computer when they're working on them. So you can imagine there is an effect and we are conductors because if you, you know, if you need proof, talk to someone who does computer repair, you know, or electronics repair, they have to ground themselves. So we do have stuff going through the, through us electronically. And it is a fact, but I have to ask you copper, is that stuff legitimate with copper? Because they're making copper socks and things like that. Mm -hmm. And some people are starting to ground with copper, I would put a copper bracelet, and yeah, it's been around for a long time. I feel like. Yeah, but you know, like like yeah. as seen on TV, like yeah. they're starting to get into Rite Aid and CVS. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it has been around a long time. Yeah. But is that legitimate? Yeah. Okay, so the is there a wait? What is what like? If I got a copper bracelet, what benefits would that do? Is that it's not grounding, is it? Or what is that like a balance? I think it's more like a neutralizer, right? Like okay. it just like neutralizes the negative like frequencies okay so like see i i'm totally like Ooh. i wear these so like you got your chakra beads so these <laughs> we're talking about copper so copper is like I just wanna, so copper is like like that grant like that grounding like metal type of thing so like mm -hmm. these are stones right uh -huh. this is shungite the black one is shungite so shungite protects your body, it helps to like neutralize like the negative effects of electromagnetic frequencies. So I think that copper kind of does. Okay. Yeah. There's there used to be like one of those multi level marketing companies that you would buy all these like necklaces and bracelets. Mm -hmm. I never did any. Of, I don't. I just never dug deep into all of that, so I can't like scientifically answer your question. Uh huh. That being said, I feel like they work. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, because I mean, there's even like, like all of these. They're used like, for I therapies for different things. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I can't, I can't explain it scientifically, but like, I, I know for me, like when I wear this is what I choose to wear. Uh huh. They help me. Do you drink out of copper? No. No. Okay. No. Because see, I've, there's copper cups too now. There's copper cups, but there's also like shungite water that you can put shungite in into the water and it changes it and you drink it. Shungite water. I don't know what that it's, is. It's a stone. You basically um, cleans out the water. Do you know what? My my filter, my 11 stage filter, one of the filters has lodestones in it. Mm -hmm. um, those are uh, rocks that are naturally magnetized. Yeah. Yeah. Probably something similar to that. Okay. Have you heard of Pristine Hydro? Yeah. Out there in Laguna? I have. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I have one of their filters. Okay. Yeah. So you, that's one over by Mother's Market, right? Yes. Yeah. Have you met the owner? No, I've been there, but I haven't met the owner. <laughs> His name's Glenn. Is it? Yeah. Oh, and uh, to go meet him. <laughs> you should meet. He's. You guys would vibe. Yeah. He's sixty something years old. Okay. He has had a lot of surgeries, and he was a former. He's open about this. So, drug addict, mm -hmm. 
and he learned about nutrition and important like uh, trigger points in the body. So if you, he will say, hey, you're fit, you know, some, he's like late 60s. You know, like some older people like to show you off how, or showcase, sorry, showcase how their body's in good health. He goes, feel this, feel how soft I am. Here, stand on my leg. It doesn't, and he could, he could do the splits. He didn't used to be able to, but he works, he actually has probably the same type that you have. I've never used them, but these big giant, they're all steel looking um, compression things. Mm -hmm. And he works his muscles and he gets like Thai massages and then filtered water and eats real clean and shows how detoxing his body and keeping it alkaline and all this other stuff. But if you get a chance, you should meet him. He's 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 eccentric. He's eccentric. Eccentric. <laughs> That's not a there. negative, is that? No. Derogatory. Okay, no, yeah. He's an eccentric guy. But if you get a chance, but his water filters has lodestones. Mine has like coconut shavings. Yeah. Um, just all kinds of stuff. So it it imitates rain how it go through the earth yeah and get magnetized and all that other stuff and then got it you know spring water i love it yeah. i have like organite stones too like organite pyramids and there's those have like copper coils and a whole bunch of other like metals and people make it and it neutralizes all the electromagnetic frequencies too. really yeah. wait they're called what organite 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 okay yeah, I, I, I'm making an appointment with you. Right, and I, I use my Shanghai. I use this for my phone, the safe sleeve. Okay, yeah, I have a wallet like that. It protects against my all the EMFs. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I have a wallet, but what sucks about that is my my fob. I don't take it out of my pocket for my car. Yeah. It wow. actually blocks the signal of my fob. Even my fob is like, yeah, it yeah. blocks the signal. Yeah. So I have to pull the fob out to make it work. It blocks everything. But I didn't know that. I just meant it for um, my wallet for credit card protection or oh, yeah. things trying to damage the cards. Mm -hmm. But it's so freaking strong. It's weird. It's cool. Yeah. But okay. Sorry. <laughs> I went longer and longer. Sorry. Because you keep opening up these wormholes. No, 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 no. This, it's, it's all good. It's all good. But I want to thank you for coming on. Again, it's Delta. Delta. Wellness Group. DeltaWellnessGroup.com. Yeah. All right, deltawellnessgroup.com, and you're located in San Juan Capistrano, California, which is in Orange County, Southern California. Um, I'd highly recommend checking them out. Check out their website. Um, and and there's no social media handles yet, or as of yet, right? Well, Dr. Supna. Oh, Dr. Supna. Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah. Dr. Supna. It's not me. I don't know. It's not public. They'd have to just message me on there. I'll message her on there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so that, <laughs> website's probably the best. <laughs> yeah, website's the best. Website's the best. But if you want to just Google about her, it's it's Supna, S-U-P-N-A-R-E-I-S. A-L-I-S. A-L-I-S. I'm yeah. sorry. That's I don't okay. Know what, I'm messing it up. Supna off. Alice. Alice, yeah. I don't even know where the R and came from. And Glenn is my husband. And Glenn's her husband. Yeah, so they're both good. And their website discusses the treating... Um, therapies that they offer there so it's good stuff well thanks again for coming on i appreciate you taking the time thank you thank you fun. all right yes it was thanks.